Hello there and welcome to Fame and Vill Approach for Company of Heroes 3. I'll let the map speak for itself. I'm going to introduce the players. We've got Markov of Peru, who's made him made his way to this grand final by beating Elpern of all people, one of the top two or three Company of Heroes 3 players in the world. And Markov was able to defeat him. He's up against the reigning Master League champion. It's Jibber Jabber Jobber of the Netherlands. And, um... He's a pretty swell guy. He's currently uh, doing pretty well for himself out there on the battlefield. And I've got somebody else with me today who's doing pretty well for himself when he can be bothered to play Company Heroes 3, that is. It is indeed Orange Pest. How are you doing, Orange? Well, I'm doing pretty good. You know, had a good breakfast, had my coffee. So I'm pretty happy. Any weird fermented breakfast foods that you sweet No, eat? no, no. Just, just bread. Homemade bread. Oh, nice. That does sound that was, that was good. Let's talk about the tactics we see in front of us. Let's talk about Markov's... Well, it's Brits. We don't have to talk about his build. Let's talk about Jibber's build, though. We've gone for a Kettencrad on Feynmanville. What do you think about using that vehicle on a map as small as this one, Orange? Well, I think uh, I think the purpose of getting the Ketten in the first place would be to deploy mines quickly without having to overburden your pioneers. As it does have trip mines, and I think a, a standard mine. Yeah. They're both very, very useful, and just, just getting a bit of recon and information. I mean, Brits are pretty bad at capping in the first place, which is like the primary weakness in the early game. So just having some extra capping power and just an annoying unit he has to chase around is just always useful. We'll also be able to get these manpower points in the north and the south, the newest addition to Feynmanville, which is playing a lot like Company Heroes 2, you guys will be very excited to know. Um... It does actually feel like Co2 to play, and it's weird. It's like it's like Co3, but also like Co2, and maybe. Uh, I I would say personally, we need to see double MG double pack first before we can make that judgment. <laughs> you know. Oh God. Azilagath wants Jibber to win. Azilagath in chat is the person that Jibber beats to get to this grand final. It was Azilagath in the other semi-final of the day. Here we go. First engagement coming in. Royal Engineers trying to close the distance. They're being focused down. Tommy's follow up. Meanwhile, we've got Pioneers defending the left flank, and Ketten is going to go for the cutoff. Well, yeah, that's precisely what you should be doing right now, just taking. I mean, these aren't ever going to be efficient fights for Varen in the early game, regardless, although he's getting a lot of value out of these grunts because of Marco's uh, poor positioning. Yeah. And just the Ketten, while this is happening, is just going to be harassing and just being annoying. I think he's proven how to play with Grens. You keep them protecting other Grens. It's blobby, but it works. And then he'll be able to upgrade them to Assault Grenadiers. A couple of things you guys should know about this. Uh, all credits go to uh, K-Pen for doing all the modeling on this map. I helped out a little bit with some of the like concepts. But um, this best of five is uh, funded by my Twitch revenue. So all big thanks to everybody that's subbed over the last few months. And it's also... Battle Group Terminator. So that's the last time um, Jibber will be able to use Breakthrough Battle Group this game. Should Assuming we... he remembers. <laughs> yes, big, big assumption. Big if. Right. Let's keep an eye on this Northern Fuel conundrum as Markov. Let's check out what he's chosen at this point. He's not chosen anything, but um, he should surely be pushing for the plus 10 fuel at some point in the near future. So this All right now, it's just a big struggle to... Uh maintain ground because he took uh, a very bad engagement at the start i assume he might be going for healing next so there's more sections hey, may very very may well do that right. infantry sections just soaking up the map at the moment getting crowds caused a nuisance it's laid a mine did it actually complete that mine Doesn't i think he cancelled that because he wanted more mp40s and i think he also just popped the veteran c1 upgrade on tier one Yes, he did. Look at that. All these Grens now have Vetra C1. Yeah, you also get the free healing, which allows you to kind of bypass uh, being forced into heals early. It's always nice to have. Look at that, and that's the power of healing. Orange Pest, these low health infantry sections did not stand a chance. Yeah, the MP40s on this map are probably going to be godlike. At least until something like uh, Foot Guard or Gurkha Commandos at the field just... Some, some elite CQC unit. Yeah, foot guards. Is friends. Foot guards are damn powerful. Well, you need a vote in chat, by the way. Is this the Nazi Mega Mansion? Or is it um, Casa El Dane? It is a, a Wehrmacht flavoured building, regardless. Uh, possibly could have a vote later on. 
Grenadiers are being mustered for battle. He's actually going for a fourth Grenadier. Do you reckon he'll be converting these to Jaegers or Panzer Grenadiers later, or just going Assault Grands? I mean, if he if he feels like the map is very CQC oriented and he doesn't want to get like Jaegers or Panzer Grenadiers, like I feel like massing Grenadiers could be fine. Just make a giant blob and just push. I mean, it's a very CQC oriented map in the first place, and just having sprint and infiltration grenades is always useful. Mm. Doing well at the moment. Royal Engineers do have the flamethrower, the little donut of terror on their backs, but they're forced away by those MP40s. The... Yeah, and he's immediately going to be able to heal off this too, so he's just going to maintain full model. Well, yeah, just full models and just no bleed whatsoever at all. Meanwhile, the Wehrmacht player does not have to invest in the 20 fuel required for the medical station on account of having Veteran C1 on all of these grenadiers. So it's working out well for him. We might actually just be seeing a straight up push for tier 4. Because he hasn't made any tier 2 buildings yet. Hmm. Could do. Yeah, I feel like he's just going to go straight into Panzer 4. It's not a bad idea in all honesty. Neither is this sniper. Snipers are famous on Feynmanville. They are always uh, they always provide good worth because they have two excellent avenues to fight from here and here. You've got some good cover around that area. You can constantly poke in against the enemy. Yeah, it's going to be really useful, but I find that this might be a bit of a trap as, like, I mean, just a single steward would just kill him. Mm. Even a Humber here it would be enormously, like, painful, because he would have basically no AT whatsoever. <laughs> Notice something, by the way, K-Pen, just for our notes, I think you can build the Tier 1 reasonably far away from headquarters here, but up here, you can basically build it in the center of the map. Something we should look at. Maybe we made the base too big. <laughs> it's bloody big, isn't it? That's if you look at yeah, the video. Yeah, maybe it's just so long as you don't get base pinned anymore. It's the only thing I'm happy about yes. or care about, rather. Same. Right, MP40 is proving their worth once again. Meanwhile, Captain Crad gets away scot free. Has access to the camouflage ability now as a passive, so it can lurk around and chill. Sniper. Seems like Gibber has started his first tech, by the way. Okay. Um, that's, that's Markov. Yes, Gibber. thank you. There we go. Yeah, give me one second. <laughs> <laughs> you know how alcohol addled and boomerific my brain is. <laughs> Panzer Grenadier. Okay. Uh, oh, I just want to say that, Nick, because uh, this is a very late tier 2 in the first place, so I think he's just going to go for a straight, like, super extended tier 1, which he has. And I think he's going to start promoting at least one grant to P-Grants, I would assume. Mm. Otherwise, it'll be just Stugs, I, I guess, which is what he did against uh, Elpern last tournament. Always been found out here. He wasn't able to get the kill on retreat on this idle infantry squad. And the Predator becomes the prey. Well, I have to say, the sniper's been well ignored so far. It's not, well, he doesn't. Not, he's not ignored it. He's just not been able to get it active as poor Jibber. He's now pushing it forward with a... An entourage of grenadiers. There we go, first shot in. It's always going to be poking away. I mean, just the presence of the sniper alone. Like, even if it doesn't kill anything, it's just always, like... You have to be aware how you position your entire army as a Brit player now, because you know... The moment he drops, like, two models, or even one, he kind of just auto-lose engagements. So it's just... It's always, like, even if it's not killing anything, it's just the way you have to play around it. And the vote is in on chat. The northern mansion of Feynmanville is now Casa El Dane. I think that's awesome. By the way, I was doing some research for a Co3 video earlier today, Orange Pest, and I used PropagandaCast to find the exact moments of patches in 2013. Because he did, like, 3,000 Co2 casts, and there's, like, a living library of the meta as it evolves. There's no yeah. better tool in the world than Imperial Dane. It is like, I actually, I, I went back like a couple of months ago because so I wanted to look at some really, really old games. And it's oh like, basically every day he casts. So. Yeah, but you can use the index right? numbers like Propaganda Cast 178. Uh, from 178 onwards was when the Tiger Race hit. And I could see that Imperial Dane chose not to cast Imperial, uh, Tiger Race games in November 2013. So when the Wehrmacht were too powerful, Dane did not cast them. So I think that's a, a big sign of a true co-enjoyer. Well done, Dane. Victory point lost. Interestingly, uh, Jibber's using the cap ability 
Which, I think it was bugged and then it got fixed, right? So now his captain speed is not, like, insanely fast. No, it was stacking. That was the problem. It was a genuine bug slash exploit. And here we go! Little tripwire! I don't think that even kills models. I think it's just, like, five damage or something. It's, like, really, really tiny. Uh, Love Nest's not going to use it, then. No. Oh my god, do you remember where you could plant trip wires on the outside of buildings? You mean how Love Ness won several ESL tournaments? Of course I remember. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and here it's we go. Disgusting. Speaking of which, we now have the Sturm Geschütz on the field. MVP AFV of the Wehrmacht in the Second World War. When, I'm still uh, not a fan of the Stug, by the way. I don't think it's like. It's that amazing. Word. We're going to see some point. Blank blasts, or as Orange Best called them yesterday. What was the um, coming point, here as point one blank of them? <laughs> yeah, that's it. Point blank <laughs> shoot from Co. One. Oh. Very cool. Oh, it's one of those spellings in Co. One. It's always so funny to me. Yeah, they are. And the detonate me with an exclamation mark for uh, the <laughs> yeah. demo charges instead of detonate. Enemy forces have captured a victory point. Hmm? Got a standoff here. Who's going to win? Scope the Enfields. Well, MP40s. There's your answer. Tell you what, the Royal Engineers are tanky. One of the first things Orange Best ever said to me in Co. 3 was, Bro, just take those Royal Engineers and throw them straight into Alpern's face. Yeah. So they, they just oh. overrun basically all the Tier 0 infantry, and even Tier 1 infantry. Bro, the Stug just did a wheelie and you didn't even recognize it. When have you ever seen a Stug do a wheelie? That was amazing. I, I only care about the Stug E and D variant, so I don't care about the G. <laughs> I'm not a fan. I think it looks ugly. It's so particular. Yeah. I only like the uh, the short barrel uh, variants. Clinker, go check out my YouTube comments on my recent video. Some people were on about they, they really don't like crushing and then glad it's gone. And I just told them, listen, you're a crushy, I am a crusher. It is for you to be crushed and for me to crush you. That is how the crushing mechanic works, isn't it, Orange Pest? Yes, exactly. <laughs> Just run them over. Exactly. In their base. Oh. So 1, 2, 34 drifting and then doing like the spin slide thing. Yeah, just, like, crushing them against guys. their own headquarters buildings so they can't move. <laughs> yeah, that was that's, beautiful. That's true co. That's that's amazing. You're all crushies if you don't like crush. <laughs> right, two be, stubs now. It will be bad at that, for sure. It has to be. Too iconic of a mechanic. I tell you what, considering these game replay lengths are epic. I'm struggling to think how Markov breaks out of this awesome stugification with the sniper backup. It seems like he's uh, pretty hard countered right now. We also have the Kettenkrad going all the way around the back. Can he get over the bridge? Come on, Kettenkrad! You can do it! Oh, I'm pretty sure he can. He's not even trying. I guess he just wants to provide recon. Uh, has Markov selected a commander yet? Has he selected a commander? Yes, he has. He's gone for British Armoured Battle Group. He's waiting for the Crusader AA medium tank. It's gonna. I don't. Some... I don't think he's gonna get the Crusader. Really? I think he's just gonna go straight for the Blackburns. Well, considering he's up against two Stugs, that's probably a good idea. Okay, flat last game when he played against Alpen yesterday, Shiver or well, Alpen did a similar build, I think, except he did Falcon Pioneers. And just mass stugs against double AT gun with the Black Prince essentially was the matchup. Yeah. Which is, it's a bit odd, but I guess if he wants to roll that, he can. Just find it a bit weird to just stall for so long for like a heavy. Yeah, Black Prince, otherwise known as King Churchill. Otherwise known as the Church, uh, the Sherman Firefly, because Orange Pest and I are going to pretend it's a Sherman Firefly. So our historical accuracy bonus uh, remains intact. Gloria, 17 pounder. <laughs> Beautiful manpower point capping. For and he's using the bridge. The beach, rather. Oh, these added fame and vil features all in one there from Jibber. He deserves That's to win. That's the scenic route. <laughs> it's a matter of fire. And he's sprinting away for 15 munitions. Costs money to sprint, apparently. Yeah, it's really weird some of the pricing of things. <laughs> Like, the, the Grand Sprint costs uh, munitions, and then you have, like, the Berg Saliri Sprint, which literally buffs you, but it's free. Yeah. Like, it makes you harder to hit and stuff, like, it doesn't make any sense. I just don't think Sprint should cost uh, any munitions. It should just be a thing in the game. It shouldn't be as fast as it should be, and it should have big cooldown, and every infantry squad should be able to sprint. 
I don't know about every infantry yes, squad. Yes, they but... should, Orange Pest. No, no, no. no that would have no. been cool. I, I, I don't mind free sprint, but I think uh, every squad having it is a bit of a. Uh, yeah. So you're saying soldiers should not be able to run in a war? I'm saying uh, it would be ridiculous if you had sprinting AT rifle sections. Come on, chaps, let's walk slowly towards the enemy. I, I prefer the Napoleonic style warfare when you <laughs> gather up box in a giant Box units. Could you shoot. imagine box units? Like, yeah. Quick, lads, form a box. I'm just honest, the British should have that. Those tactics are outdated by the time of World War I. No, they to go back to another game. Things come and go. The box will return. Yeah, I'm sure in the future. Nibelwerfer on the field. This thing has an awesome range. It can no longer just devastate the base without going to the middle of the map because K Pen and I have seen to that. But it should be pretty decent. Actually, how many support weapons is it up against? None. Actually, one. Oh, there what? is a six pounder. <laughs> yeah, so he's just massing sections into uh, double six pounders. And I guess Jibbers is. I don't know where you go here. I guess I personally probably would just go MG42, but that's me. Yeah, I think MG42 would be good on this map, definitely, as Axis. I'll just keep it around this area and, yeah, just last line of defense. Why not? Stokes going north. Let's see what he can see. Let's see what the mighty Jibber can see right now. Not much. He's just got his line of defense. He's got two victory points. He's got fuel. He's got two manpower points, giving him 205 income per minute versus Markov. Well, he's Brit, so he gets more anyway for some reason. Don't he worry. gets more because sections don't have that much upkeep. <laughs> yeah, it's I, mean, I, th I, I think upkeep is an interesting mechanic, though, because it does influence how your compositions work. But it's, he kind of punished us very much for going vehicles right now. Well, there's the anti-Royal Engineer device, the Nebelwerfer. Really uh, not too keen on the usage there. Let's say Jibber is blue. I like Jibber being blue for some reason. Yeah, but on the bottom left, he's red. Oh, yeah, sorry. Good shout. My UI. I, f I remember. I forgot I had color coded UI. Well said, Orange Best. That's why you're here. You're paying him Someone's going to keep the sense here. Someone's got to try to, indeed. The entire British army on screen here. Sniper sniping away. We've got a very juicy mine here. I love the positioning of that mine, of course. To stop it's a bit force. of a trap with how AT rifles work, though. Like, you know how they can just shoot over and accidentally trigger the mine? Yeah. I'm, I'm fully expecting there to be, like, a vehicle pathing over and then, like, an AT volley hits and it accidentally detonates the mine on yeah. top of his own vehicle. That's just Brit things. That's how Brits work, bro. Yeah, you don't like it? So... Get out. This is how we won World War II, single-handedly. With giant Yeah, you just rifles. charge with the machine guns head on and just overran them with yeah. your rifle fire. And with huge rifles. Oh! Speaking of mines, there we go. There's one detonating somewhere. Yeah, it's the one uh, right in front of your screen. Good mark, in the center BP. Yep, it exploded. It. Yeah, the AT rifles detonated because he shot over it. <laughs> Six pounder pushes forward with a vanguard. Two squads forced away though from the Nebelwerfer. That's pressure applied from the frog. Not frog thrower. It's a fog thrower. But it would be funny if it threw frogs, to be honest. It would be one way to poison them. Getting grad, planting another mine. They're being used remarkably well this game. I think, well, with this build order, he basically has nothing else to spend on. He's already upgraded the Pentos, I'm pretty sure, and the Grants are all upgraded, so you might as well just spam mines everywhere. Stug comes into view. Does it? It's near the VP. Come on, Markov. You maybe could have seen that for a millisecond, perhaps. Inkuna being typically elitist in chat, saying Alpern lost to Markov. Markov's bound to get good one day. Let's give him, let's give him benefit of the doubt. He, he's kind of crushing on Brits, though. Come on. <laughs> I mean, just look at his RB composition. <laughs> yeah. I don't think you can. You cannot go wrong. No, it's with, difficult. With Brits. It's it's insane. Also, uh, one CP away from the Black Prince now, which means the thugs are not going to be that useful. And to be honest, they haven't really done anything that well anyway this game, to be honest. I, they gave uh, Jibber some spacing, but I feel like a Panzer IV could have done better. Or even a Whirlwind. Mm. 
Here comes the Brit Blob. What can you do? From behind cover, it will not help you. Maybe the Nibelwerfer could come off recharge soon. That could help. We can only hope. It's setting up. There we go. Come on, Nibelwerfer. Get rid of this Brit Blob for us. I guess Jibber's thought process is that uh, I guess Markov's is going to blob up all his infantry if he gets a couple of juicy uh, shots with the Nibelwerfer. He'll lead him a lot of manpower. I guess that's the one vibe. It's the only weakness of armor is that, like, section bleed is be, be heavy. Although it doesn't look like uh, Markov is bleeding that much manpower anyway. No, he's, he's got to get out of there 500. with the Stug as well. The six pounds have pushed forward. Stug's in a spot of bother, to say the least. He's been hit twice. Couldn't get out of there fast enough. Nice incursion by Markov. He simply blobbed through the mines and Nibelwerf of fire and got the kill regardless. What a genius. I, I consider that Soviet tactics. You send the weakest first, and they tank all the mines for you. <laughs> yeah. And Did he? Up, he must have upgraded the training center, right? Or the support weapons? Um, no. No, just same as yesterday. Just infantry training is the. Uh... Flavor yeah, so the, so the crazy thing about the uh, AT gun for Brits is that once you upgrade it, it does even more damage, which turns the six pounder into an actual life killing machine. Mm, it's not that it's, like, it's actually it's genuinely like scary, but mm. a lot of people don't seem to care about it that much. I know, seemingly so, but it's not that bad already. It's uh, dependent on map, though, of course, Road to Tudis and seemingly Famonville. And these mines are getting planted. There's going to be two of them forming a miniature mine field by coming hero standards. Here in the north we yeah, Jibber it. doesn't really have a choice anymore. I feel like he's kind of reached the stage where sections kind of just run you over. Yeah, it's getting there. They've all got veterancy, and that veterancy matters in a big way. Yeah, now it's all mines and vehicles trying to hold the line, which is it's not fun. <laughs> not fun in Jibber's position at all. Yep, so Imperial Dane's guessing that we're stalling for the Tiger. We do have access to the... There's a mine for you. The Black Prince shortly. 690 manpower required. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's going to be that and plus vehicle training. It's going to make the Black Prince just do insane amount of damage. And then, then I Here guess it is, Orange about... Fest. Here's that moment you wanted. Oh, we can't see it anymore, but maybe he could have triggered the mine with the uh, 55 cal or whatever it is. Or he's 80. The are a fuel oh, there's a juicy oh, needle, God. And he is a juicy tank. Using is that the... two of them? I think that's two noble warfers. Yes, it is. He's got needle and Werfer. And a pack up. Yeah, so we are getting to that Famonville style kind of support weapon play. And we are now getting to that red alert. Chronosphere style alternate history reality. In this the Churchill Firefly. Straight from 1946. They came back to the past to save the future. <laughs> I'm looking for Sarah Connor. That should be the voice line in a Scottish accent. I'm looking for Sarah Connor. <laughs> Oh god. Let's see how close our good friend Jibber is to the almighty tiger. Well, he needs nine command points. And unfortunately for him, the Black Prince is just straight up better than the tiger. Mm. Especially thanks to the veterancy training, where it does 30% more damage once it hits that three. Oh, there's a nice wipe, however, for the Grenadiers. Markov getting a bit lazy there. Well, with the way he played Bretts. That's about nah. to happen, unfortunately. Yeah, it is a lazy faction, to be fair. As, to be honest, this Tommy got away with it there. Grenadiers, Veterancy 3 with 15 infantry kills pushing in. Black Prince trying to create a nuisance for itself, but just exposes its side armor like the big battleship it is. Yeah, it's just going to be a nuisance, but, you know, creates a bit of a strong point for the rest of his army to just uh, push out from. But I don't think this will so last. Once the tiger comes out, I think Marco will actually be in a big, big heap of trouble. Hmm. Are we kapowing? There we go. And the Nibelwerf are coming in on the repairing squad, stopping the victory point cap, meaning that Markov is he's quite low on victory points, really. 188. Great pressure applied by the Dutchman so far. Yeah, I wonder what, uh, what place... Uh, 
Marco's actually gonna follow up this with because I don't really see where he could go from here. I guess he techs up, but if he loses the Black Prince, that's it's a big waste of time. Look at these grenadiers waiting in ambush, possibly very much in the bush. Could indeed be doing, and a nice wipe there from the sniper, now gaining its twenty-fifth kill. Not too shabby at all. Yeah, it's paid for itself, but it doesn't Enemy feel like this night. Like it's quite a lot of pressure, but. Considering he's just blobbing like every fight almost, it's its value is going to be negligible. Mm. He's getting the victory points in the north as well. This is going to put even more pressure on him. He's daring him to come into the center. Black Prince is almost ready to fight with its titanic 1,200 uh, health, almost reassembled. Ah! Grenadier attempted him into a mine! And then fought back. Both squads destroyed mines, win games, baby. And that's what we're seeing right there. That was 140 manpower's worth of uh, value right there from that mine. Nice. We oh, can hear the rumble of anti-history coming onto the field. There we go. Black Prince is ready to fight. And where's this tiger at? He needs a natural foe. They're all so far, it remains uncontested, though, and just a section blob in front. Oh, God, that, <laughs> oh, that could have been worse. That could have been a lot worse. He's going forward. The Pat 40's been found out. Oh, dear, that's going to be annihilated. Nebelwerf is trying to save the day. Yeah, he's shown a big heat. Well, he's shown a lot of weakness here now. The fact that the Stugs are not in position, the sniper is gone, nothing to really threaten the AT guns. He's just going to blob everything and push oh. the Prince forward. Vet 3, Ketan goes down as well. Black Prince marches in. We've got Grenadiers watching on, the, protected by a mine. But that's all that's keeping them alive right now. Let's go over to Jibber's perspective. And yes, he has it. He has it there. Indeed, it is 58 tons of original German heavy tank. Kruppstahl on the field. And it's going to be going up against its anti-history nemesis. The Black Prince from a dystopian nightmare future where the British yes, made. Uh, a very famous rivalry that totally happened <laughs> in Berlin. Oh. oh, God. Yep, there's a very dead Grenadier that actually did happen. Right, he's trying to cruise some of these AT guns. He's heard the Tiger. The Tiger has a limited window of opportunity. We've also got the Stug going in here. That's a veteracy one Stug. Maybe it could use the point blank shot. Here it goes. Stuck's he cannot in. close in with the Tiger though, as uh, Markov has actually teched the AT nades and showcased that earlier when he dropped a uh, rifle nade on one of the grants. Stug forced away, Grenadier pushing in. Stug's trying to survive, but it's very light, but it's hit by the six pounder. It's so little health remaining. Tiger can't go in. Nebel can though. This thing hasn't gotten any kills yet, but has caused a nuisance for itself. A lot of flame damage. Stuck on it in peril. It's only got 83 health remaining, but the Grenadiers are there to protect. Anti-tank gun down. Black Prince still has 1,200 health. He hasn't lost a single point yet. Yeah, now it's a very do-or-die situation for Jibber. Those AT guns getting away like they did, it's going to be a massive problem, as Jibber does not have any AT to support his Tiger anymore. He's stuck with Grenadiers with Faust and the Stug, and oh, that is no. a really good option. Oh, good wipes here though, Grenadiers getting in. Are there any British infantry to help out? He may be able to get one AT gun at this rate. One it no, there's more infantry sections there, he's not going to go for it either. The more he kills, the more pops up. <laughs> oh dear. Right, Tiger wants some fun again, but this thing's already down to 710 health. It's frontal armor, by the way, it's 300. Meanwhile, Black Prince is 340, and that does matter. Uh, I think one of the most important factors, too, in this uh, specific matchup is the fact that Royal Engineers repair faster than the Pioneers do. Yeah, oh, God. Like, substantially. Like, Royal Engineers have, like, I think the highest, or one of the highest repair speeds for allies, and just that alone makes trading incredibly difficult for uh, Jibber. Feel the Black Prince is very reminiscent of the early Tiger race. It's, uh, it's like you're basically on a timer. You have to kill it. You have to go all in. You have to try and break its back. Otherwise, it you know will eat you alive slowly but surely. I think I think a bigger problem is uh, Gibber's strategy overall. Isn't very suited to go up against this sort of unit. Like the Tiger is a solid answer, but it's not the best answer. I think you'd really need like a flak ADA or something, or just heavy heavy AT. 
Well, which you don't really have forties. at the moment. He's got two pack 40s, he's got a Stug and yeah, he's got a Tiger. One remain. should expect that this should be enough to counter the Black Prince if Markov overextends. And that's a big if, if. If this was Code 2, I would 100% agree, but <laughs> this is not Code 2. It's not balanced AT guns yet, don't, don't swing engagements the same way. Unless they're British AT guns, in which case they absolutely do, because they're not. Big Nebel shots coming in. Stug uh, gives him line of sight and range there, but he's not able to capitalize because the, the Nebels do fire very slowly indeed. Does Markov have the training center now? Like, the, the support? No. He do, he's not even... You, oh, man. Uh, so, fun fact about the vehicle training. If you're already vetted by the time you upgrade it, it does not apply. So, he's lost out on 20% extra damage in his Black Prince. Oh, that's not good. So, he's that's going a hunting. massive misplay. It is, I suppose. It is indeed. He's going hunting, though, in the north. He feels that he can... Here where the Stug is. Oh, he's hit a mine with one of the AT guns, however. Maybe he could capitalize on this, not with a Black Prince protecting. Meanwhile, we've got Grenadiers trying to push away one of these infantry sections. We do have the victory point in the south, vitally secured for Jibba. So he does have a, you know, pretty decisive victory point hold on the game, Orange Best, at least. Yeah, this Black Prince has just proven to be a massive problem. And the Tiger hasn't really done much yet, except the uh, punching bag for, for the Black Prince. And Dude, it has I two kills. Really That's great. <laughs> How much manpower? That's like 50 manpower out of 600 something. <laughs> That's a solid... Uh, how much is that per kill? Let's just have a look here. So it's 140 fuel per kill, 350 manpower per kill. That's a solid investment so far. It's doing, it's doing so well for itself. I think, I think the problem though is just Jibber probably doesn't know what to get here. Cause I, I wouldn't know what to get here either. Uh, you don't really have an answer to the sections anymore. At a certain point, Grand stops scaling against them, which is what we're running into now. And the well, fact that uh, let's this... theory craft, let's theory craft. He has 300 munitions. He has three grenadiers only now, so it's not like he can just backtech them into Jaegers or something. But surely Jaegers Shreks would be an option. Oh no, as the Stug is definitely no longer an option. And dude, have these Nebelwerfers been good enough for you? What do you think about them? Um, two was an overkill. One yeah. is fine, because AT guns are always problematic, but... Just, just, eh, he needs more. I think one of the plays he theoretically could do is he back takes to the Jaeger, gets the veterans he won and starts converting all his Grens. But even that, like against the, the Black Prince specifically, does not feel like a good answer. It reminds me kind of like on Jaegers against Matildas. Yeah. Like you'll just bounce off and you'll trade poorly. Mm. So, I mean, Sniper's worked out well. That's got 36 kills, is it now? You have 36. That's been a solid investment, and it's prob probably one of the reasons he's been able to keep the victory point pressure alive. Tiger... Yeah, it's been one of the best investments by far. Maybe you can go double sniper. That's what I was thinking, micro. yeah. So instead of you have double to be on point with the, with the micro when you do that, though. That's the problem. Some players say that snipers take no micro to use. Orange best. The beggars are threatening a victory point. Well, this Ryan reminds me very much of Code 2. Do you remember when Feynmanville used to look like this towards the end of a really good Code 2? <laughs> this total uh, carnage and paraphone and now you're on Mars <laughs> instead of... Uh, What's the sniper doing? What was he doing? Was he trying to go on the bridge? That's just silly. Oh, he might be dead here. Nah, no, because Markov missed Harry that. Had he shot and those AT rifles hit, that would have been 100% a dead sniper. I think doesn't the game retarget your squad sometimes if they like another squad comes closer? Uh, I think it does. No, I've never experienced that does, personally. Yeah. Inka Una has experienced it. Well, maybe you should micro better. <laughs> no, the game re-micros your micro, and you have to then re-micro your micro to micro. Uh, maybe for vehicles, but never. I have not know. Oh, it's sure it only experience. vehicles. Okay, fair enough. I think so. I don't. Pretty sure it's never happened in infantry. Right then. What, what do I know? I, I yeah. don't just, Together we know nothing, John Snow. Girl. Right then. Pack nice 40 in cloak mode. That's helping them a lot. Black Prince now veterans to 216 infantry kills, one vehicle destroyed. It's having a hell of a day. 
Sniper's got to hold the line for the Wehrmacht because it's not looking good. Mine deleted by the Tiger. Well so done, now Tiger. He has a crude negative value with the Tiger. <laughs> Because that, that mine was the clutch mine. That was the one we were expecting to, like, save the day. And the Tiger's now deleted it. Yeah, Markov is just not doing anything at this point. He's kind of just... doesn't care. Like, look at his resources. He has... He could easily get, like, a Crusader AA out or literally anything, but he's just not getting anything out. Welcome to Brits. Yeah, I don't know. This is... <laughs> kind of annoying to watch. It is. He's got so much manpower as well, and he could do a lot more. He could finish the job. Markov um, can get a little bit lazy in the mid-game, and that's when he can make games into 50-minute games. I think a lot of high-level players could have pushed on from here in Markov's position and could have uh, solidified the win, in my opinion. The game should have been over the more the Black Prince was had in my book, but that's just me. Well, let's see if he's building himself a uh, throne of defeat. He could be setting himself up for failure here. We just don't know. Maybe Jibber has some master stroke. Maybe Steiner's ghost army is on its way. We're losing a capture point to enemy action. What's re what's Jibber's resource count looking like right now? Jibber, he's got a crap ton of fuel. He's at 97 pop cap. He has three pack 40s, um, with the third one now built. Sniper's having a good laugh. Nebel's still not killed anything, and the tiger has killed three infantry squads. It's got two friendly kills, by the way. The Tiger has two friendly kills. So, I'm really not a fan of Jibber's build right now. Having double nibble is okay, sort of, but he has no answer for the sections aside from the Tiger. Going triple pack is a decent answer against the Black Prince, though, but he has no real way of protecting it outside the sniper right now. He is one of the six garrisons of the Nazi Mega Mansion in the north utilized. Faultless world builder usage. We had no choice. Literally. Alpern well, in chat better says, than like some super OP mansion that like perma deletes all the infantry with their hyper accuracy. Yeah, true. Ooh, Tiger's been hit in a big way there. We've got two six pounders pounding on him. He's got to get out of there and he'll take a while to repair. Is that a fresh grenadier squad? Is it a fresh Grenadier squad? No. Yes, it is! Because he's not control grouped. It is. Or he is control grouped. Regardless, he's fresh. He's fresh on the field, Orish Best. What are you calling him? Steven. Gerald. Dead. Dead. Phil and Dave. That's just weird. I guess he just... He's desperate for infantry and he doesn't want to invest in Panzer Grenadiers. His way to win is a victory point victory, or best. Surely you see that. He can't hope to defeat his army. Yeah, but you don't win one on, on one with Grenadiers at this stage of the game. Oh, just imagine that I'm um, Darley's scream at the moment because I'm like, yeah, you don't win on victory points, Orange Best. You're right. That makes perfect sense. <laughs> He can win on victory points, it is possible. He just has to out-pressure, out-work, out-micro, and out-cap his opponents. It is possible, Orange Best. Yes, but this is the wrong unit. The Grenadier at this day. They can this... cap! Look, he's trying right now! Yeah, sniper can cap as well! Go, Sniper! Uh, all I'm saying is there are better options, alright? Although this does volley fire like concentrated guns. It's slowly chipping away at the Black Prince. There you go, there's your thumbnail for YouTube purposes. I don't think the Tiger's ever going to have a standoff with the Black Prince, but these packs certainly will. Sniper is scouting for him. Let's go over to Jim's perspective. Let's get Fog of War unlocked. We have grenades in the north, and he's gotten out of there. Oh, he could have done more. What a, what a hero. 50 kills on this guy. Any patrons in chat? from the Master League want to name the Sniper. I'll give you that right for funding all of our tournaments. There we go. We have a dropped boys anti-tank rifle. That could prove helpful. Oh, Sniper's forced away. He couldn't get the kill and he's forced away. Completely to base there. Oh, he's getting blocked by the pack. Oh, no. Pathing. What's happening, Relic? No. <laughs> he's tripping over the pack, huh? <laughs> Pack guns and pathing don't mix in Co3. I don't know if anybody else has noticed. 
It's the same thing in Code 2. You can actually do the same sort of uh, thing, it's just a lot rarer. Oh, that could have been good. Maybe you should have won one side, won the other side. That would have been even better. Tiger is going on a summer holiday. He just rampaged through this garage. <laughs> just the sights of nature, man. <laughs> oh, Neville Verfa. We got some actual decent damage for once. This grenadier has got very low health. We've got 32. Yeah, the one thing they are accomplishing with these uh, noble morphers is he's denying a lot of ground. <laughs> he's going back through the garage. He absolutely crushed the crap out of that. Well played, Jibber. And You're only limited to one heavy tank, right? Um, yes, yes, you can. yeah, I okay. believe so. I've never used to have a heavy tank, so I don't actually know. Those team game enjoyers out there in chat, when they get their one game every day in the search times, they will attest to the fact that you can only have one heavy tank. Okay, that's good to know. So I was thinking maybe double tiger otherwise, but... And don't forget, by the way, I believe that Jibba can spam the breakthrough in this game to get some really fast capping. I'll have to keep an eye on for that. He does have another ability too that he can use for munitions, I think. It's like a vehicle buff. Nice. Well, Tiger actually bounced a shot there. What's going on? Veterancy one. That's the lack of uh, team weapon training. Ah, uh, I see. Yeah, it's not Veterancy one. It's certainly the lack of that. And we got a Vet three Black Prince, otherwise now known as King Churchill. Is that what we're selling on King Churchill? There we go. Pack forties are actually penetrating there. Nebel fight Verfus fighting back. Important battle in the south. Can he get these grenades off? This could be important, Orange Best. Oh, that was Ooh. a good one. Sniper, meanwhile. A lot of man -push. Being hunted down. I think down. Markup also just built a fresh section. Did he? Oh, my lord. Why did he make another section? The capping. It's a capping fight. It's a victory point battle, Orange Best. Come on, you understand this, surely. Yeah, but... I, I'm just too sensible. I just want to tech up and like get the cool of the units. I guess. Yeah, you try and kill people in Co. These guys play victory points. It's different. Yeah, some people are nice. aggressive. Some people are control players. These guys are control players. You're like, what are victory points? <laughs> I kill the enemy or I die. They yeah, literally. You only in your Co. Two games like cast. You only go for fuel. You never go for victory points in the first six minutes. Yeah, it's for pussies. <laughs> Clearly. And now you're struggling to understand the concept of the players trying to win on victory points. Here we go, we've got the blob of all blobs from El from not Elburn, it is indeed Jibber going forward and getting an Alpha Salvo on the Black Prince and denting its health to a lowly 745. It's all a little HP. Oh so Jibber's so fuel danger. is about to hit six hundred in the next minute. That's uh, impressive. Well, Always enough to build like well, that's enough to build like two tigers. Indeed. He's always gonna have a, a replacement ready at least. Tiger could go north here. That could be so cool. Hey, Marco is actually starting to lose on the VP war though. Like, oh sniper no! Wilhelm! Oh no! That's probably the biggest loss he can have. The. Yep. That was his best unit, like straight up. And another and one I'm... just died. Jesus. He's making pop cap space. This is genius. Absolutely genius. He can build another needle. So, so he has to protect his three packs with two grenadiers against seven sections. And a tiger that's oh chilling God. in the north, just guarding a victory point. <laughs> he has to guard the south, uh, the north, or even just the south. But this is just. Cutting it a bit fine here. Dude, this is bad, like real bad. He, he has basically two combat capable squads. Stop doom saying he's winning on victory points, Orange Best. It's possible. Trust me. He's got better I, micro. I, I believe in the the off map the combat group deployment. We'll yeah, exactly. Day. That could happen. Stop doom saying. Meanwhile, Tiger with its fleshy front just gets absolutely eviscerated by anything that looks at it. We've got <laughs> some action in the centre. Pack 40s, Nebel, Grenadier going in. Black We're Prince watching on with its disgusting points. frontal armour that's impenetrable. Oh my god, this thing. Grenadier going in for an amazing Faust. Just like the Hitler Jugend on the, field, on the front of the Reichstag. It's 
a fourteen year old boy carrying a Faust and just gets eviscerated by the Black Prince. Yeah, yeah. by the no, it would be an IS-2 in this analogy, but yeah, the Black Prince, exactly. Meanwhile, mine detonates, hurting these uh, infantry sections, stopping the horde of support weapons. Oh, potato mashers. Mashing potatoes. This is getting into very desperate defense, but he is holding some health. That's the positivity I'm talking about. You may scoff, you may be derisive, but it's possible, Orange Pest. I think it just comes down to the fact that he didn't make the, the Black Prince super OP using the vehicle training and now it's too late. <laughs> Possibly so, but either way he's got a chance. Meanwhile he's going south for this victory point, it could be vital. Black Prince looking to stop it, this leaves the centre somewhat exposed. Where's his army? He's only got one bloody grenadier to go there. He's behind heavy cover, can he hold? Uh, there's an incursion in the north side too by the Brits. That's not going to go very well. It's Tigers there. Uh, Green cover needs to hold here. At this point. Oh, there it does. Green cover down. Gren's forced away. Back in the center. Nebel fighting for Jibber's life. Grenadiers go forward. Tell you what, Nebel's coming in clutch a little bit there. Tiger it is very, very good at just denying territory. And right now, he just has to deny everything. And he's got two of them, so he can keep cycling. So he should at least get like. 30-ish seconds of, like, free space. The enemy has What's he thinking here? He's, he's just queued up. What's he queued up there? A grenadier. A grenadier, bloody deer. Okay. That's a choice. But he's got 626 fuel. Well, he can't... At this point, it's too late. He's committed to his build, so he can't take up. But he, I think he needs, like, something heavier than a grenadier. You know, like... It's just a Jaeger for smoke would be useful. So at least delay, like... Because what, what's end up happening right now is that you, you beat back two sections and then two more are right from the base and they just <laughs> kind of walk across an open field and just volley fire. Yeah, the seven-headed hydra of British infantry, so difficult to defeat. Nebelwerf are trying its best, trying to anticipate the Brit position, but no, they're staying on the centre. Black Prince there, wow. Come on, Pax. Make a game of this. Tiger's coming in. He's make himself, made himself look like a tree, but the, oh, the six-pounders don't care. They're going to take the tiger out. This, this game feels more like World War One than World War Two right now. Yeah, World War One tank armor as well. No attack random max range, should be able to survive. Grens go in. And he's capping. No, the Pioneer's gone past it. He's done a helping hands. Over here, my friend. There you go, he's seen it. He's capping for his very life, like it depends on it, but he's not going to be able to get it off. He does get a Faust off, shocking the Churchill. I think he's more surprised that he even tried. Mm. Enemy is down to only points. Funny too, the, the Churchill, I think, negates all uh, vehicle crits on it too after a while. Oh it repairs that's the best itself. one ability. Yeah, critical yeah. repair. Oh dear. Repairs criticals while out of combat and stationary. Oh dear. So even if it does hit a mine, all it has to do is stand still. Pioneers against boys' AT rifles. How can we defend ourselves against such wanton hatred? This is GG finally. Took Jibber a while to be defeated, but Markov looks like he's done it now. Yeah, I think he sunk himself with his build. Well, yep, that's it. He had a go. Like, like he's sitting on 500 munitions, pretty much. Yes, like uh, if... the way this is played, this is yeah. It, it could have been more aggressive as well from Markov. Big th shout out to Jibber for giving it a go. We can't flip over to Jibber's perspective, but I'm pretty sure he had 700 fuel remaining. I just feel like, I don't know, There was let's just theorycraft what Jibber could have done differently. Obviously, he's up against arguably the most OP faction. Not because they are OP on the elite level in a grand final of a mass loot tournament. We're not saying that, no, but they are just easier to play. And um, maybe he could have gone Panzer IV spam. Maybe he could have tried to keep his Stugs alive, keep the Stugs... So, so what could he have done? the way I would approach this, personally, uh, it's I would have masked... Jaegers. At least like two yeah, Jaegers. Yeah. Sniper. Probably an MG. You can't really go... Like, my guess is okay because Tiger's good. And the MP40s are really good. But at a certain point, you kind of just get overrun anyway. So you're mm -hmm. better off either going for manpower efficiency with planes. Or even the stock battle group might be okay. Yeah. Panthers, maybe? I don't know. The Black Prince is very really oppressive. The sniper kept him alive, though. I mean, I know the sniper died and then 
10 minutes later the game was over. But trust me, guys, it takes a while to catch up with it. Like, the sniper is correla correlative, correlatory with uh, performance if, as Wehrmacht against Brits. Like, if you keep your sniper alive, your pressure will show itself on the map. And when the sniper was alive, he had two victory points. And when it died, it came crumbling down upon him. Because the Black Prince and the sniper were kind of trading kills, if that makes any sense. Black Prince ended with 48. The sniper actually had 54 on the time of death. So, yeah, he needed to keep it alive. Stern Panther agrees in chat as well. Uh, it's just, you know, when that died... Well, the sniper's the, uh, basically at this stage of the game. The only thing that stands up to have the threats on the battlefield. Yeah, exactly. It's one of the only things that can keep the Wehrmacht alive. And as soon as that died, he died with it. It was only this, a matter of This is time. also, by the way, why I prefer playing DAC against Brits. Well, that's the thing. I think DAC against Brits on this map is a lot more competitive. It definitely feels like they are what we're going to remember of the early days of Co 3, I think. I know Wehrmacht are kind of okay in some contexts in US as well. Um, they've been very powerful on certain maps and certain builds. But DAC versus Brits for me is like the. What, how we'll remember the early days of, of Co3 competitive play. That's the yeah, we'll have to see what this new balance patch that they're talking about is uh, going to involve. And Pathfinders. Maybe I'm just wrong. Yeah, more Pathfinder nerves. That'll help. Maybe I'm just wrong. I just, just really feel like uh, that was a decent game. Markov could have been a bit more aggressive, and Jibber could have chosen a few different things and kept his sniper alive, and he may have won. So it was a close one indeed. GG, well played. Go, going now. live let's um let's download these replays looks like we've got all of them that we need so it's a full best of five which is pleasing Okay, then. Let me just double check the file sizes to make sure I've bloody downloaded the right ones. Game to All righty then, guys. How are we enjoying the... Um... Yeah, the, the gameplay length was bloody long. How are we enjoying the map, though, everybody? Is everybody thinking it's good? Any th any things you can think we need to improve on it, Orange Pass, so far? Um, I'd have to play and lose. <laughs> uh, I'm very, I don't know, like, you only get, uh, I only get really into, like, why a map is bad once I start losing on it. That's when I realise what the problems are. Hmm. I mean, Willy 2 is here. I get what you're saying, and I agree, but the, the Nazi mansion actually... Um, it's kind of cool in some other ways, though. The whole idea that it's six garrisons means you can't utilize it fully, and it just makes it weird and quirky. I quite like that. Some people don't like it, and I get that, but I think it's got its charms. Um, we're going to cast as the Fairmax guy for this one. Nobody's going duck. Hmm. Save. Okay, the map is not smaller, it's actually bigger, um, slightly bigger, because um, we added a bit of depth to it on the north and south extents, and the north base is bigger. Yes, Co3 units move faster because you've got a lot more light vehicles that are a lot faster than they used to be, Colonel, basically. Um, yeah, good stuff. What are you doing for the rest of the day, Orange Best? Got anything planned? Uh... Watching anime, probably. Wow. Uh, the trials and tribulation of the fully corrupted youth of uh, Western Europe. Well, I, well, I, well, I, well, I'll watch Breaking Bad all day. Mm, that better? Okay. Have you seen? Is, have you watched Breaking Bad? Yeah. That's good. Watched the entire thing. Yeah, obviously. That's more than Breaking Bad. I can give you more recommendations of genuine. Red blooded male TV series without Japanese teenage girls involved. 
Yeah, but I don't watch the stuff that has the Japanese teenage girls. Okay. I watch the stuff where it's big men killing each other. Is that Swedish Interpol? Yeah, you don't need to do a hard drive check yet. He hasn't actually said anything. Okay, good. Fair enough. Okay, you're clear for now. Orange Pest, you're clear for now. Jesus Christ. Have you seen The Wire? Uh, Have no. you seen Sopranos? No. Have you seen Better Call Saul? Yeah. That's a good one. Parts of it. Oh, you haven't seen all of it. On season three. Oh, keep watching, it gets better. Um, there's a lot you need to watch, my friend. Ozark's alright. Yeah, I like Ozark. It doesn't end I, that I, well. I stopped liking Ozark after like the first season. Yeah, it's still good. This guy is never read the chat, guys? No. I never read the chat, guys. Answers your question there, because Steel answers your question. <laughs> have you played Age of Empires 4 recently, Orange Fest? Uh, I have not touched it at all. I just like watching the tournaments of that game. Yeah, I would be interested in getting into it. It's actually, like, I've gotten a lot better. Which is nice. Well, my, my flavor of like strategy games that I go to when I'm not playing like, oh, so, uh, it's, it's like Total War. It's like what I play instead. <laughs> yeah, Total War's good. I like that. I haven't actually played since the revamp of uh, or re-release of T Rome Total War, but uh, yeah, it's pretty good. And I just like the multiplayer aspects. <laughs> Only puts me in the minority of people that play Total War. Mm. I actually just like the campaign map of Rome. I liked raising the cities instead of trying to occupy them. That probably speaks as to what kind of person I am. Mm -hmm. You heard it, Dugamir. You you heard you heard the sound. Find me the moment because oh, that sound. You are just hearing things. No, that man. sound exists. You are losing he's, your he's mind. He's heard it too. Take, he's heard take... it too. Like, you're listening to voices right now. I'm not. Telling you Dugamir things that you exists. Want to hear. I can They're see his chat. Th They're just telling you things you want to hear. Thank man. you, Dugamir. Like... You're doing the Lord's work, sir. Dugamir, get that man a raise. He's he's heard it too. I'm not crazy, Orange Pest. You are out of your mind. The sound exists. <laughs> you guys see Dugamir too, right? I can, it's on my screen. I can see him. He's he's proving that the sounds that I heard in the cast are true. <laughs> You're losing it, though. I don't know. It's a but like it sounded from Amnesia Dark Descent. It was a sound effect in Co Three. I'm sure of it. The the trapped souls of the original Company Heroes One relic devs crying for an eternity. You murdered my boy. Look what you've done. We didn't see our families for all of 2005. For this. It's haunted. Relic HQ is haunted. Trust me. Um, the console players will actually be invited to a field hobberator where they will be given clumps of mud and asked to throw, it, throw them at each other uh, naked. And that's going to be the console version of the Master League. So, yes, they will be able to play, but it will be a separate league. Just to answer your question there. Uh, let's uh, watch the game now. Thanks for that question, by the way. Let's do it. And here we are. The Peruvian has masterminded a 1-0 victory using some of the most OP units possible. And here he is, going with his pioneers, going into Kettenkrad. And he's up against those dastardly damn Brits. I'm not going to select the Brits this time, Orange Pest. I don't want to see any more infantry sections in the top right of my screen. All right, that's pretty good. I hate Brits. Uh, also, you forgot to share your screen. I know I did. I was too busy lambasting chat. Don't worry about it. I am a professional. I always remember my checklist of things I need to do before I cast, and I never mess up, ever. So true. The markup is playing Wehrmacht as well, so it looks like it's going to be a lot of uh, Wehrmacht versus Brits. 
I just think Dak would be so good on this map. I just like Dak, I guess. I, I think Dak would not be that good on this map, actually. Really? I can tell you why. Go on. Uh, Panzer Grenadiers 1 would struggle, like, substantially to get into a good position. We can get a lot of value. Yeah. I think the bike itself would, could be strong, but I feel like against Brits, we're just going to Sony out with AT Ruffles, so we're going to struggle. And then... And then the Stug... I think it's the Stug B, I think it's called. Yep, Stug uh, 3. Would not be that good either, because you're then used to move around the stuff. It's a lot of the uh, thing blockers, you know? Especially on the right well, side of the map. Well, if you'd been a Giga Chad and just, like, walked out of work to play in the tournament yesterday, as you should have done, you yeah, could have I'll, proven I'll just... to us whether Dak were good or not. But as it is... You're a beta male, and you just ended up casting. Yeah, I should have just walked up to my boss and punched him in the face and said I quit. Oh, or a Picked super a living of coke. You could have kicked him Grenadiers in the face as well. Apple. That's another option. <laughs> Grenadiers marching onto the field. We have the... Ketchikrad, please go to the island. See if you can go to the island. I want to see if it's possible. Oh. Norfolk Barry has to prioritize just harassing the map, I think, and just defending. Mm. He doesn't really have time to go for the vampire points. No, he does not. We have the Grenadiers marching, going further on, bullying this Royal Engineer. And right now, Jibber's infantry sections are going southwest. Going to the plus five fuels. What do you think about the territory layout, Orange Best? Is it working for you right now, the way the fuels and the munitions are kind of laid out? Well, for me as a DAC player, I would personally prefer that 10 plus muni to be a manpower point. Ah, so you can get cutoffs in the middle. No, so I can get even more manpower. <laughs> okay, okay, I get it, I get it. Because if you put it together, you're getting something like probably 32 plus manpower a minute if you have four manpower points. Pretty huge. Mm. But if I did that, we'd probably have to make these weird manpower points munitions points. We are losing control and of the to be honest, that would actually make a lot of sense. No, 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 it's no, no, fine. No, it... keep, just keep them as manpower points. Shut up, Dak Enjoyer. By the way, the, the Pterodactyl here, Orange Pest, he is currently trying to manu manipulate this map so he can win on Dakazit, so he can get cash money, because that's how he operates. Just like when Nagorno went into balance forums and argued that the Command Panther wasn't OP back in 2017, <laughs> I watched it and it was flagrantly, uh, deliberately biased mis in misinformation. You gotta do what you gotta do to earn that money, man. <laughs> I wish I'd screenshotted it. It was... Uh... It was incredible, actually. Absolutely incredible. Back in the south, idle units capping, plus 16s. It takes a while. That's why they're idle. We have lost the sector. Oh. Oh. It's dead. Top-level gaming from Markov, everybody. Nice work. What do you need? Well, it's just the pioneer, so it doesn't matter in the long run, at least. Yeah, I suppose. He's got two M... What? There's a... Another squad just went down. Oh no, the pioneer ran off. No? Did did he just kill another squad? Can anybody confirm? No, he just cancelled the pioneer. Ah, yeah, that makes sense. Thank you, thank you. Understood. Double MGs. It's Feynmanville. Kotu's back, everybody. Gotta love the double MG. Now he just needs double pack and we're good to go. <laughs> Never thought I'd hear Orange Pest say that. He just loves Kotu that much, I guess. Enemy forces have no, I, I hate that game. <laughs> I hate that game with such a pressure. It, yes, it's your most played game of all time, and you revolt. You based your life around it for several years. But of course, you hate it. The, the, the captain just got killed by a royal engineer. Nice. On the north side. This could be bad. Oh. Oh, that's his mine. Have been mastered for battle. The Ketten died, did it, up here? Yeah, uh, that's a bit more left. You see the yeah, red? Yeah, I see. There we go. There we go. Oh, looks very dead to me. Good work, good work, engine. MG goes forward. He's going to trap this. Ah! Nice, using the reconnaissance. Spotting the MG before he gets there. Good play from Jibber. Enemy infantry! Scythe! I'm asking myself that, the anime policeman. What is Markov doing? He's currently going into what the Nazi Mega Mansion. I assumed he was going to double up in those buildings, but they have pretty awkward shooting angles, right? So he won't be able to do much. Look at Markov's vision, I think, vision, I think by the way. theoretically, he should win that fight, but I think he assumes he's going to lose, because he likes the game experience. Yeah. Normally, you just you win that fight overwhelmingly with the grants. 
Yep. Couldn't really do anything from the frontal face of the uh, NMM. Back in the south, MG's helping to push out. I believe we've just... Ah, the mortar's out. It's a rarity, mortaring the corpses of this uh, former pioneer squad. I mean, it's not a bad idea. Oh, is that the 120 mortar? So there's a truck on the field too. Yes. And I know what that means he's doing. This thing's going to become the Polstern. Exciting. That, that's Call an ambulance. Really Call an ambulance, but not for Polstern. You were expecting that to be a medical douche, truck. Douche, douche, douche. This is me insulting you, Orange Pest. <laughs> <laughs> Enfield scopes versus the Car 98Ks of untrained Grenadier militia, apparently. Actually winning, what the hell? Well, it's two squads against one and they're behind green. I, just, yeah, I would I hope know. they would win. I'm just like dunking on the Grenadiers, that's all I'm doing. They're not that bad, man. Terrible. So Polston's bullying the MG. I, I bet I could beat you with just Grenadiers, dude. They're well, not bad. I'm like top 1 million and you're top 10. Well done. Congratulations. I bet Michael Jordan could beat a 3 year old in basketball if he only used his left hand. Right. You have to just play with your left hand. Exactly. Grenadier is really uh, low on health here. He's going to have to get. He's, mm, He'll have to get healing, surely, just for this credit here, because... He, he has teched up to tier 2, so I assume he's gonna go for stug first, maybe, mm. instead of heals. I feel like he's already kind of cornered, and he's just lose, losing everywhere, essentially. Mm. Typical horny toad things, he doesn't know that this isn't a, uh, a cow. It's got... Oh, Polston. Here we go, it's up to three infantry kills now, and doing more Grenadier, the low health Grenadier, might I add. And it literally did no damage, oh my god. Come on, Paulson, you're better than this, surely. Apparently not. And it's not a very good unit. No, I know, but the, the thing is, the why Jibber goes for it is it's practically free. You, you pay for this, you yeah. get this as like a weird sidekick. You're basically getting like a, a free momentum unit. It's just good. Like, against Ver, that doesn't feel any like vehicles of their own. Yeah. There's not really much to threaten it except Jaegers. Yeah, because the 2-2-1 is so bad. Until that thing gets buffed, the Ver will remain like that. Jib is applying maximum pressure now. Marcos back on his haunches. He's really struggling. Finally getting healing? No, not yet. He's just rushing out the Stugs. I really don't get this obsession with the Stug, man. I really don't. We have lost control of a victory point. MG goes into this miniature garrison that's forced away thanks to the scope of the Enfields and evades the mortar just about. He's now going to try and go south. There's no heavy cover here anymore. Controversial, maybe. I don't know. Oh, yeah, there isn't. Mm. You're right. We just, I didn't even know that. We were just trying to get the angle of it right and then KPM was like, why don't we just delete it on both sides? Like, okay. Cause it was I mean, it makes sense because um, it swung engagements really hard in favor of the love left side. Yeah, it did. The, the that reason that was sandbag. Orange Pest is because the one sandbag was here and the other was there. So I was yeah. like, Capen, why don't we put it here and here so at least it's kind of safe and then it looked stupid. So we were just like, okay, let's delete it. And that's why it no longer exists. The more you know. Oh, Grenadier mortared before he could even get onto the field there. I mean, the mortar's doing pretty alright already. I just wonder what Jibber's follow-up is going to be against the Stug. Yeah. Mortar, by the way. Let's see how much health... Uh, sorry. He's gotten two kills. Um, he's not gotten very far down to Vetracy 1. I think he's... It's not a lot of HP damage. So, I mean, I would say it's pretty alright. Maybe. Here comes some uh, base arty. Come on, base arty. Engage in the base arty party. Surely. Is that what it is? Looks like it. We must make a stand. There what did you say? Base altar. There we go. Right. We've got, um, he's going on a summer holiday. He's gone too far. Though. He's fishing before he caps. You don't want to do that. You want to be within the circle if you can help it. Meanwhile, That's probably uh, the tactical map not being very good. Eh. Don't know. I think it's very easy to make that error. Oh, I see. Yeah, the tap map's in no way finished at the moment. Definitely. Let's hope not, anyway. Now under Flanking around control. the side, and here comes the Polston. The Polston with only three kills. 
Tell you what, the MG has to be careful. Jib is all over Markov here. Yeah, right now Marco is probably trying to think of a solution to the current problems, but I mean he's sitting on 500 manpower, he's not building anything. Yeah, that's uh, that's not great. Just feels like Dak is the counter. Oh. At least these are no, there's no boys AT here, but tell you what, he might reverse over mine. That may impede him for a long time. Low health Grens, very low health, 59 remaining. I'll tell you what, if they poke their heads around this bush, they could get the squad wipe. Oh There's yeah, the, the out of cover bonus is wild. Oh, more shots. Oh, just about safe, thanks to the pintle mount of the Stug. Mines were just about seen there, possibly. And here comes that dastardly Polston. I mean, the Paulson is being a menace. Uh, Marco is not really deploying any combined arms that well right now, so it's just a massive problem for him to try and establish himself on the field. What's that indicator above the Tommy's head there? What does it mean? When he's out of cover, he just does hits oh. better, I think. It's, it's disgusting. <laughs> it's it's the thing that makes the AT rifle so broken. Oh, okay. One of the many things you mean. Well, no, it's that, that's literally why, because they, they beat everything because of that bonus. What about the anti the AOE profile against infantry and stuff like that? Doesn't matter, because the, the thing that carries them is the fact that, like, the moment you step out of cover, you just get eviscerated. He's using the bridge. Look at these beautiful British bastards. Such, um... Ah, he's bringing in the Polston for some Polston-y fun. Why not? Meanwhile, Jibber taking the cutoff here and smoking himself out. Will he get the neutralization? He's close. No. Oh, he's found it with the stug. Rear hit. Oh, and finishes the job. There we go. Polster down. Well, it already paid for itself. So its price is basically zero. Yeah. <laughs> not hard. Not hard at all. The Stugs are going on a bit of a mini rampage right now. He's got Gren support as well. And yeah, he's found a, he found a decent opening here to maybe start pushing through. I think he's got a Nebelworth around the field too. I saw some flames in the base there. No. On what, what's that flaming thing in Jibber's base then? That? That Scorch Mark right there. Um, what Scorch Mark? <laughs> Don't know what you're on about, mate. No problem in base. It's absolutely fine. What the fuck? I just cleaned it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> What's that? There's nothing there. It's fine. He's building a company command post. Okay. It was because he built a building and cancelled it, basically. Oh, right. MG setting up. Grenadiers being having some fun regardless. And that mortis being a constant nuisance. Look at the health damage now, Orange Pest. Now it's getting it. I'll tell you what, it takes a while to get Vestracy, doesn't it? Yeah, I assume though this thing becomes a beast once you apply the uh, the training center upgrades. Because that'll just increase its damage, and just over time, the thing will just become more and more annoying to deal with. Ooh, this MG could get taken out here. Needs to be careful. Oh, I don't know if he's going to survive the. The vault. He can't. He's got the MG HMG. Vault, yeah. Oh dear. You have three command points at your disposal. Wow, Jibber's army, as requested by Kauzak, fellow uh, top twelve in the world player. The two um, six pounders, four Tommies, a mortar, a stolen MG now, and two Royal Engineers. He's basically. Won the game. We are losing the lead. Yeah, this game has been over for a little bit. That's yeah. why I'm not really invested. No, I understand. It's my job is hype caster to manufacture the hype at all costs. Holston was hype whilst it lasted. Uh, that, that was, was an interesting choice. I don't really see people build a 
the mortar. But I find the foot guards. But this will probably be the killing blow, as they're so insanely cost effective. Mm. And they beat everything. And the stung is in trouble. Just saw. It. Oh god, it's on 1 HP, I think. Mm, yep. Yeah. Oh, it's dead. Good call, or best. And some flowers emerged. Yep, yeah, that's game. Let's call it there. It's over. It's 1 1. Let's do a best of three. Nope, still going. Come on, Markov. It's definitely over, son. Well, we did just drop a recoilless rifle. I don't know what he, He's got that out of match mentality. You gotta give him uh, a, a complete killing blow where it's like impossible for him to win. For him to quit. A lot of people will do this in tournaments. It just takes forever for them to lose. Yeah, it's a co one mentality as well. They do it in tournaments regardless, also. Grenz marching forward aimlessly towards the victory points, getting annihilated indeed, Markov. With a bit of an auto-match mentality here, he's dropping more, uh, well, Falsham Jaegers this time, actually. Don't forget, I mean, he does have a, a hefty victory point lead, so maybe he wants to maintain that. Oh, no, he doesn't. It was a victory point battle to the death in the first game. Maybe he just wants to level out the victory points, I mean. Well, I guess, but... I think at this stage, there's not really much comeback potential. No, seemingly not. He's hitting mines for days. GG is cold. He's just sick of hitting them. Let's go over to game three.
interesting actually is the bike to lives you stop paying attention to it <laughs> never give up orange pest especially on a little bike that's your exactly. best friend so what interesting there it was did you hear it thank no. you dugamir it exists it's a thing listen didn't expect the bike to lives you stop paying attention to it <laughs> never give up orange pest especially on a little bike that's your exactly. best friend so what interesting oh it's so creepy i hate it i hate that noise man oh in the background it's happened like once every five casts i've had to do and i've heard it once every two or three hours it'll sound the secret bone men of relics ancient past It exists. Thank you, Dora, Dora Mia. I knew both you and I weren't crazy. Don't forget to share screen, by the way. Oh, I want to. I want to, Mr. Pesh. Please don't make me share my screen. I've given you so much already. <sighs> Healthy. Healthy beers. Right, let's do it. Share the screen with Orange Pest. For Orange Pest is the best pest. We're just playing the same factions over and over again. Surely. Uh, no. That's the wrong one. That'll be white. Um, the IPA was very good, Dugomir. But let's try the Golden Hen. It's uh, more of a sugary, hoppy beer. Don't know, Bajor. Don't know. Don't particularly care. I don't want to try Jeremy Clarkson's beer. He punches people in the face and then blames them. It's, it's weird. It's kind of alpha, though. It's not! Yeah, I do like him as an entertainer. I liked him on Top Gear, obviously. But as a human, he genuinely seems like a... Not the best guy in the world, let's face it. A piece of shit? Yeah, he does seem like a piece of shit, doesn't he? But, you know... He has to vibe. He definitely does. Um, like his own daughter disowned him recently, which is quite interesting. Because <laughs> of... Uh, I can't remember what he said. It was something pretty bad. Something about Meghan Merkel or something. Very fast to stop talking about coming. It's weird. Um, I think we've got the replay set up now. I've got to do my little checklist, and then we're good to go. Let's go. I'm going to share the screen, Orange Best. I don't remember that bit this time. Okay, I'll check myself, because Orange Best is not listening. No, I didn't. All right, fair enough. There we go. Shared. And reveal the fog of war. Do the swish. It's not really the Master League. It's just a good transition. And here we go. We've got... That's right. It's Jibber this time. It's Vermat. He's 1-0 down. Can he be the first person today to crack the mighty British army? He's going to give the good old Luftwaffe a cra crack because uh, it is Battle Group Terminator. I mean, he can't play the same faction more than once. Meanwhile, no surprises in the north. Markov's playing the Brits. He wants that $50, Orange Best. He wants it badly. Well, I guess the doctrinal choice will be the Indian artillery, most likely. There's no Black Prince to crush up. Mm, yeah, no Black Prince this game could be a difference maker, but we all know how OP the IAB are. And instead he gets to make 10 sections, they all get to be super cheap. Yeah. Let's Although I will have say, Jibber's all blue play. Go on. What are you going to say? The, the Falshing Pioneer is actually really, really strong against uh, sections in the early game. And crew available. They're and one of the few Wehrmacht units to trade well with them at uh, practically all ranges for most of the game. And here are those. Superhuman. MG42. Backbone of the Wehrmacht in. Coming here is 1 and 2. Yet to really solidify themselves in Co3. Quite yet. But uh, with increasingly better maps... Joining Road to Tunis, 
maybe we'll see more of them. The colours aren't wrong, are they? I've changed it to Jibber is blue. Very a Foster. I wanted Jibber to be blue because he is the Vermax and I don't want to cast as the Brits if I can help it. Let's... I wonder what uh, path he's actually going to go on with this commander. Because there is a, a choice of fast uh, Balsham Jaegers, which are just you know, super specialized anti infantry units, but mm. going for the cheaper manpower helps a ton, especially in the mid to late game. Well, yep. Balsham Pioneers are the flavor. Royal Engineers are coming in. He's got the MG that's just revealed itself. Can he protect? Seems like he can't. Meanwhile, more Falsham Pioneers here against Royal Engineers yet again. Nice early start from Markov, but he's losing this battle at the moment. Needs the infantry section to help out. Indeed, they do. Forces him around the cusp, but he's not repositioning the MG as Jibber. He possibly could have gone up north here, perhaps, maybe. Yeah, he's just taking every fight he can get. Us. Oh, there's a satchel on the right side. You missed oh, it. I haven't. There you go. Good team comms, Orange Best. We should form a CSGO team. Go B, go B. Or something, you know, that kind of thing. Oh, God, no. I'm terrible at FPS games, man. There's a reason I only... Yeah. Okay, well, I'm like slightly above average in like Tarkov. It's Is like that... the only game I got decent at. Uh, okay. I used, to be, I used to be an FPS monster back in the Xbox 360 days. I know that was before you were born. But, uh, no, no, I played during the 360 days. I just didn't have access to multiplayer because I didn't subscribe. <laughs> oh, and uh, the US days. Uh, sorry, the PC days with uh, Medal of Honor. That was a good one. Call of Duty 2 on the, the PC as well. Battle. Battle yeah, 1942. Well... In uh, in Sweden, I think the mainstream sort of FPS game people play is like CS. Yeah, I liked CS:GO like, when it first came out, but it, I'm not good enough. Every time I try and play, they call me a noob. It's upsetting. Yeah, because it requires skill. Yeah. All right, here we go. I, my dad was one of those guys who played a lot of CS. <laughs> he would have been. That would have been early 2000s. That was when it. Was yeah, like he played. Uh, he played yeah. 1.6 and the variants before that. Nice, nice. There we go, taking the man power point with a two-man Royal Engineer in the south. Meanwhile, he's got infantry section pushing into the centre. It's no formality that Jibber wins this game. He may be the stronger player, he may have won the last game, but Brits have already proven themselves on fame and fills so far. Uh, the Brit lob is just very difficult to overwhelm. Yeah, but Jibber is going for the fast false Omega. See, he already went the, the recon pass instead of the smoke run. Which gives him slightly less CPs to invest for the Falsham Pioneers, or the Jaegers rather. And the Jaegers are actually one of the few units that stands up against the uh, sections really, really well. The, these guys, and plus the Falsham Pioneers, especially once you get the manpower efficiency bonuses, it's just so effective. Especially because you can line mines everywhere, everywhere. you can repair. So much utility. I'm talking of utility, we've got. Falsham Jaeger Gewehr 42s, MG 42s, both fantastic weapon systems, but they are being resoundly destroyed by the number two flamethrower. Flamer is always OP. Just about managed to win, in this case, only just. Good map pressure by Markov thus far, he's now going on a summer holiday, though more worries for a week or two, kill a goat on your summer holiday, make your dreams come true. Alright, I'm going to test your best. You're in charge of the Co-3 balance. How do you balance the flamethrowers from where they are now? Hmm. First you fix the stutter stop. Okay. That's a big problem. So it just allows you to do so much damage. Mm. And I would either increase the cost pretty heavily. Yep. For like 80 munitions. Good. Um, so Stop there. The... You've passed my test. You did yeah. not say nerf their range, nerf their damage. You said increase their cost. You've passed my test, Orange Best. You're part of the Giga Chad community of people that want a powerful game full of wonderful weapons that kill a lot of things. And we don't well, it's want... just um, in Code 2, right? Like when you got a Flamer, it had a bit of a timer on it, especially against the uh, OPW, for example, right? Like at a certain point. Flamers to stop kind of being useful in general, which is just kind of not fun. Mm. That's kind of my stance on it. Yeah, I agree. I just want it to be more expensive, to be frank. Make it a decision. Do you go flamethrower? If you do, you have to keep it alive. And Co-3 right now is a no-brainer. Of course you go flamethrower. 
Regardless, MG's in peril. We've got the recce sections, the scope, the Enfield's coming in. Meanwhile, we've got a lot of DPS coming on this route. Royal Engine in the, power, in the south. Cut-off attempt coming in from Markov. He's playing out of his skin here. He knows he needs a win as Brits to remain viable in this best of five series, Orange Pest. Yeah, after this, there's not much else he can go. He'll have to play Commandos. And... <laughs> well, Commandos, while decent, aren't the meta at all. And I don't think he can rely purely on the sort of place that he's been relying on so far where you just spam sections with that Commando. We finally see an early Humber utilised. Possibly not now, because of course he's gone field infirmary, depriving himself of the earliest Humber. No, he's just, oh, he'll be able to afford it, field wise. But he could also go Stewart. I think Stewart here would be a decent call. Victory point is under enemy control. Just nice, just cast from the minimap. I don't have to think about anything. Just drink beer, look at chat. Someone's been spotted. It is indeed this middle engagement over here. And we do have a flank possible, but the Falsham Jaegers will see to that. We must no victory points right now for Jibber. He's suffering yet again on the victory points as Vermat versus Brits. And it's the standard fare at this stage of the game, but you know, maybe I'll go for a four, uh, third Falsham Jaeger. Just go full elite mainline. Just hard count to the sections. Would, would not at all be a bad call, actually. Everybody in chat read, I'm Todd Howard's by Skyrim. That's literally what happened in Code 2 in 2014, uh, or 15 rather. They released a uh, commander that was paid to win for USF that uh, was absolutely well, It wasn't ridiculous. even paid to win first because you couldn't buy uh, by certain commanders, right? So you could only get them through drops. And I, I remember sure you could this. Buy it. The... No, no, I remember this because I was one of the few people, like on launch day, day one, I got the rifle company drop. Wow. So I abused people That's That's, a lot. That was your first foray into top 100 auto match, probably. No, no, that was, this was just uh Actually, no, yeah, you're right, it was. Yes, it was. I oh. know it was Orange Pest. I have right. a feel for <laughs> urchins like you. I study you and seed you in tournaments. I know how you work. You're a brutal mercenary. And of course, you your first top 100 posting in auto match would have been abusing. Abusing a commander. I knew it would be the case, Orange Pest. It's pretty much the case for all of us, unfortunately, at this I point. Know. Know. Uh, just joking, because it's you. Right then, come on, Brits. What are you going to do? Do something interesting. We've got Platoon about to hit. We've got an M3 about to hit. Okay, that'll do. That's not bad. We'll make things a bit more exciting. Yeah, Stuart's a really good call. I mean, the Hot Dream Eagles do have snares. So it's not the end of the world. There's three mine lane units. Mm. The utility of the Stuart could be limited if he hits a mine, but... I mean, if he micros well, he could just pull those into the base right now, essentially, and just, just put on a lot of map control. Especially because Jibber is dropping just another squad of Fashion Eagles, it looks like. Mm. Uh, note to KPM, we need to nerf this hedgerow because it's a bias that they can use this heavy cover, but they can't use this heavy cover to defend against North. Just, just saw that. Uh, Stuart coming through the center. Well, the Stuart tank can be quite good. He's going to have to put down a lot of snares on this if he wants to threaten it. And he might just get the engine snare actually. Oh, I tell you, that wasn't too bad. Was that a double Faust? It was indeed. Yes. So the engine moment you. Uh, so just the thing you can do with uh, any vehicle in this game, if they get hit by snares, quick successions. It always guarantees an engine crit. That's awesome. That's a really good way to do snares, in my opinion. I like it. So if you stack them and they're shocked already, they get an engine damage critical. That is cool. Yep. And he's actually I think coming... I'm not sure how it applies with other abilities. I think the foot guards have a stun thing, and I don't know if you people off with a snare that would also get engine crit them. Oh, Pretty sure yes. it's released with snare. Go on, Falsham Jaeger Blob. Out Blob the Brits. With your awesome battle rifles. Let's go. Yeah, well, if your opponent is spamming inferior mainline, the spam it leads back at him, right? <laughs> I just love people finding counters. I, I like it. I, know. I, I think this, this is basically what I would have done, probably. Just make a lot of Oh, movies. yeah, sure. Now we no, find no, no, the no. cool thing that works. No, this no, is no, what no. Orange Pest would have done, everybody. Everybody congratulate Orange Pest. I think, really, he won this game. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but just spamming any sort of elite 
the counter uh, okay. counter the sections is probably the way to go because they're just so efficient. Definitely. I mean, just I think he's lost what two models for like six, seven at this point. They're godly at this point. Yeah, they're doing so well. And your favorite unit's about to hit the one you don't understand. Mm. It's the Stug. By the way, what's the HP of an individual false maker model? Like if, you pr if you like hover over the uh, yeah 115. Oh, they are durable. They're beastie boys. I think that's actually amongst one of the highest HP pools you can have. Yeah, I mean, Brits only have 95. Falsham Pioneer is 95. 90 is like Giga the standard Falsham Jaegers with their big glutes. The extra... Especially for a four-man squad, man. That... Mm. The extra health's all in the glutes, by the way, just an FYI. It's all the squats and deadlifts they do. I think foot guards actually have less HP too. Well, I think they're 110. 110 HP is actually like insane. Oh. Paratroopers can get that sort of HP as well. We've got thumbnail potential. Thumbnail potential incoming. Nazi Mega Mansion plus Stuart equals thumbnail. The enemy has taken a victory point. Still going on a base inspection. Happy Aaron, bitte! Oh, you can see the sniper safety house in the, the main there. Now he's just gonna kill the medic tent. This is what, um... I remember, I think, yesterday, I mentioned someone had a chance to kill a, a uh, medic tent and uh, didn't go he's for it. He's not doing it because the steward's gonna save the day. Side hit in! He has no grenade package to speak of, but he's just about to get a boy's anti-tank rifle. Oh, there he is. He gets out of his back pocket. He was hiding that one. Everyone just thought he was pleased to see us. Well, they were psychically like, hiding them beneath the ground oh. when they pulled them out. <laughs> Falsham Jaeger Blob to the rescue! Elements United, there was an update. What are you on about? We don't have balanced patches in Co3. It's like it's like 1999 again. No update. Just play what you get, and you have to find all the broken stuff. Dude, that's so cool. Oh, I want to return to Commander Conquer Tiberian Sun, my first multiplayer RTS. Nod artillery, OP. Oh wait, there's no patch ever. Ha ha ha! Stuart taken out. There we go, good. Brit Blob assembles. Mighty Stug has access. To... No, it doesn't have any missions. We'll never see it. You just have to believe me that it's powerful orange, but. The boys AT has been pushed away, it's been focus fired most likely, leaving the Brits pretty helpless. Jibber in full control at the moment. Where the Giga Chats, they're assembling. And victory points fully within his control. Goes for a tour of the uh, Nazi Mega Mansion. And goes to the pier. Lovely stuff. Well done. Oh, yes. We've got island capping. We've got You know, I'm surprised capping. they haven't wired off the southern island. Yeah, that would be funny. Like, I, I just wire it off from your opponent there. Yeah, you know, you do both sides. What? That'd be good, wouldn't it? If you cap Yeah, because then you, you get on the other side, you wire it off, and then neither of you can access it. You have permanent vampire income. Just sit with me on this bench, Orange Pest. Let's just chill for a bit. Look at the staunch little pioneers having fun. Enemy Life's peaceful. Oh, nice well, yeah, it's peaceful. Peaceful life. There we go. This map is gorgeous. I, I will admit. Very good looking. Okay, Pen, hear that? You got another compliment. An indirect compliment. Nobody's going to compliment you directly. Because... Yeah, he's a fucking twat. Yeah, <laughs> basically. <laughs> so you get indirect, just like I do, when people compliment the tournament, but they never compliment me. You know, this sure is a great tournament. <laughs> <laughs> K Pen's <laughs> gonna clip it and then like print it onto a blanket and then wrap it around himself and masturbate profusely. That's what he's gonna do with your compliment, Orange Pest. I hope you're happy now. 
You know what I mean? It makes me unhappy. <laughs> oh dear, sorry. Right then, Jibus definitely winning this. He seems to have found the, the counter, line. the, the antidote. And it's blobbing Falchim Jaegers. Well, I think uh, it's less... Well, there's part of that, but I feel like a bigger issue is that Marco basically kind of... I don't want to be too mean, but he's kind of a one-trick. Like, he does an armored strat, and that's, like, that's what he does. Mm. And we kind it's of more than a one-trick. That's so brutal. Markov's a, a fine player. He just doesn't have quite the game sense of the elites like you. I don't think he's a one-trick, though. I've only seen him win with Brits. Oh, in Co 3, you mean? In Co 2, I don't think I even lost to him ever. Oh, but yeah, he was he was an okay player. Just because the likes of you and Kimbo toyed with him doesn't mean he was bad. It just means he wasn't an elite mega player. Yeah. Alright. He beat well, Elbow yesterday. Not, I'm not going to start arguing this because. Well, it just makes you sound bad. You're basically saying like a top 20 isn't as good as a top 10. Well, we know that or is best. Yeah, but it's like. I don't know, top 20 in like another game to be able to give like a top 10 a run for their money. I'd love to time. do a podcast with you and Inka Una where we discuss who's actually good at the game and we just say oh, it's no, Silda and kind we, we, of Nagano. It would be like, we, it would be like <laughs> one guy and everyone yeah. else is like Thrashy. That's what I'm saying. It'd be a Silda and kind of Nagano. <laughs> and then Not everyone else Nagano. is trash. <laughs> oh, well, well, for Co 3, is there really anyone? Uh, Ray? Ashablaw? Yeah. He uh, stopped playing. Jibber? Doesn't count. Doesn't count anymore. Doesn't count. Elper? No. You? I, I can't say yes, because then I'll... There's like four character. solid guys. That's solid, enough. but like, not, we're not nearly at the level. The, game is the game's enough. not finished yet, of course yeah. not. Uh, when it gets finished, people will practice harder and play better, obviously. Yeah, this is... This we're beta testing. Beta testing can be fun as well. Where's your... Copium. Somebody get orange best and unlimited supply of copium. It'll help him. My copium is not playing the game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the best beta tester of Red Wings because I'm the most positive. That's why. Right, I've been in two years, dude. Two solid years. I'm kind of glad Markov is losing because he's got the most infantry sections. Go on, Flushums! Kill the blighters! You know, it's a really disgusting combo that the Falsh Meagers have like 115 HP and self healing. Yeah. And ca like that, they get first strike bonuses with the camo. Dude, Falsh Meagers are wielding one of the greatest weapon systems of all time the FG 42. So anything they do, I'm a fan of. I don't care. It's fine. Yeah, it looks cool. It looks cool, exactly. It recoils directly into your shoulder. Not up, not down, not left, not right. Only into your shoulder. That's amazing. Fires a full mouse around. You know what I actually do like, though, about battle groups in this game? They oh. can kind of form thematic armies. If you look at Jibber's army right now, it's basically a complete airborne army. Yeah, battle groups are a major success of Co3. But nobody ever mentions them, because they're too busy review bombing on Steam. No, but the battle groups are a major success. When they're balanced, especially. Um, they just, as you say, you can go Italians if you want, as the Germans. Yeah, it's just, it's just fun. And just it makes the game. It feels like the battle groups are more like interesting choices than Co2. It's like you get two units. Mm, no, I agree, definitely. And that's that's actually true. In some cases, commander wise, you would literally maybe go one unit, one ability or something. Yeah, and then the rest is like, it's there, but you can use it. Oh, oh. I think that's a problem with the Muni system, though, but it's, that's not for this game to talk about. Yeah, let's, let's remain falsely positive and hype artificially, as AE so commonly does. Veteran C rates of increased accuracy, rate of fire, and unit is harder to hit. So not only does it have more health, get this at Vet 3, it gets even more health, Orange Pez. Jesus Come, Christ. Get to Vet 3, that'd be so much fun. You know what unit gets even more HP, though? So if you go paratroopers as US, you go captain, you increase the HP by 10. And then when you hit like veteran C3, you get another HP boost. Oh my god. So they go up to like something actually absurd. Oh, they're so close to vet 3. I really want to see it. You have command points available. I really want to see what health they get. They're at four, 115 apiece at the moment. Come on, Mark. 
Markov, offer a sacrifice to the Falsham gods. What's the healing rate of the, the bad ability, by the way? Oh, he's blown his whistle. I've got one of those whistles. That's badass. He's got a trench that's my, whistle. That's my favorite ability, by the way. The that's game. so cool. But, uh, you know they do a little charge, too, like uh, yeah. a screen? Yeah, that's sick. Dude, that's sick. How have I only just realized this? When I when I play Breads, uh, it's actually what I spam instead of the, uh, the resource. Warcry. Globally increase the speed and capability of all infantry when the squads are active. He's war cried onto the field. There, there, there's another thing to that, by the way. If a squad is low HP, they automatically retreat by the by the presence of your infantry. Dude, that's badass. Yeah, it's a sick ability. This is what I use to counter snipers for the most part. One Falchion there, he's close. This one's gonna get. Oh, look how close he is! Come on, this Falchion will get Veterancy 3. We will see how much health they have at Vet 3. Well, I can work it out. It's like. More... Oh, no, they don't say the percentage. They don't say the percentage. Come on, dude, get straight on there. Shoot this guy. Easy access to Vet 3. Come on. Here we go. Shoot him, call it a day. Oh, let me just highlight the one person I want to highlight. Yeah, him. He... Oh, no! No! <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> I'll just load up Steam. I'll just load up the cheat mod. It's okay. Don't worry, guys. I've got this. I've got this. It's fine. It's fine. So, it's not a best of five or best of three. Best of five! <sighs> <laughs> Come uh, on, Orange Brick game coming right up. <laughs> uh, at least we get to find out how much uh, health he has. I mean, come on, that's fun, right? Yeah, sure. Everybody go follow Orange Pest on um, Twitch. I don't stream anymore. <laughs> <laughs> You do. You streamed last week. Yeah, in Twitch terms, that's practically retired. It's something. Sounds like retired. Loading up the game. Okay then. Oh, I might not be able to spawn them easily. Vermat, infantry, Falsham. Oh, it's Falsham. Jaeger, we want these guys. Nothing can stop us. Vet 3 has 130 health per model. Jesus fucking Christ. Dude, that's so powerful. Let's just, like, experience how good that is. I'm going to match them against... What should I match them against, Orange Pest? If you want to give them, like, a real fight, go to like, Gurkhas. Okay, against a Gurker. Gurky Gurk. We have move orders. That's the Pokemon noise they make. Okay, then. Oh, whatever. Gurker! Brothers. <laughs> yeah, against a Gurkha. That's what a Gurkha looks like. Everyone knows that's what a Gurkha. They're from Nepal. It's weird. Don't worry about it. Right then. Selection. Enemy. They're going to walk right up to this Gurkha and kill. Not you. AI, stop this. Stop it. Come back. There we go. Look at this. Look how hench they are. They're barely flinching. One guy's about to die. What the hell? The guy at the front. Yeah, yeah that's how it works in coming here. They're not even in cover. Easy win against the box army of death. Just attack move, move with them. It's easy. So, there we go. That was our brief experiment, Orange Fist. Alright. Let's, uh, let's wrap this series up. <laughs> So many breaths. I can't take anymore. 
I really do hope we don't see Brits in the next game. Say hope. My my guy. There's no way we don't see Brits. <laughs> this game four or game three we're on now. It's game four, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Final game, probably. Yeah. Possibly. We don't know that for certain, but it could be if Jibber were to win. Let's uh, load it up. Tournament plans. Well, we're having uh, three more Master League tournaments in the next two and a half months. That's tournament plans done for you. Go to the Discord channel, exclamation mark Discord. You'll see in the pinned section, there's the schedule. Nice. Doesn't work. Dis uh, Discord dot GG co -M -L. There. Boom. Easy. Easy game, easy life. Let's load up game four. <laughs> 370 viewers, Orange Pest. Come on, we've got a lovely crowd here. Yeah. Yeah. They all they all love you. They're all chanting your name. Orange Pest. It's fine. Right, let me shit. Right, we'll do the checklist. I promise you, Orange Pest, we'll do it. Sharing screen. There you go. And uh, don't spoil it for chat, but there is something exciting you should be able okay, to see. Okay. Okay. Finally back in. We're finally back in the game, exactly. Um, let's go and do a do file. Attention! Pathfinders are now available to scout the. Ah, you file. heard. Okay, never mind. There you go. Um, settings, gameplay, off. Yep, good. Jibbers, that one. Fantastic. Yep, name left, name right, school left two, school right one. Boom, we're ready. It's time! It's time! It's Pathfinder time! That's right, finally, USF. I never thought I'd get excited to see Pathfinders. Yet, here I am. Jibber is the man. He's 2-1 up in this best of five series of $50 of AE-funded action. And he's up against the mighty Markov of Peru. I've got the most enthusiastic co-caster of all time. He is indeed the one and only Orange Pest, everybody. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. I, I, I'm happy for some actual variety in gameplay, though. Yeah. Just being in some DAC and US is always fun. Certainly bloody is. And this is... Uh... Right, if I remember what Jibber does, is he goes like three, four pathfinders into engineer. So he's convinced the early engineer is actually insanely good. Oh, and what's this? Mr. Markov with his Berzaglieri DAC. That's the Deutsch Africa Corps. It's a brand new faction. The first game we've ever seen of them today. That should be pretty exciting. Brand new factions. Let's go. I do. I do like the Berzaglieri just design wise. Permanent sprint is always fun. This man just vaulted over that fake sandbag. That is just milking Wait, is there it. ghost vaulting? Yes, there is. Can you do that to is. someone while they're retreating? <laughs> that would be so funny if you could just get in their way and just keep forcing them to vault. After this, when we do our AE versus Orange Best, can Orange Best beat me only with Grenadier's game? Um, we will experience probably ghost vaulting. Well, those, those Panzer Pioneers can immediately retreat. It's already overextended. The being this play, not really something you can afford to at this stage of the game. A DAC has to play very conservatively at the start, very blobby. Because 1-1, one one, Pathfinders practically beat everything at uh, mid to long range. CQC you can lose, but it's always going to be in your favor, manpower efficiency-wise. And Marco is just playing into the strength of the Pathfinders just now. He certainly is. He's getting inside one of the useless garrisons we've put on to trick people. They're just, they're just, <laughs> just basically glorified shot blockers. Yeah, that's what they are. That's what they are, except for this one. That one's actually kind of useful. It's gone. So uh, actually, are these the type of buildings that, like, when they get demolished, you can like walk on top of them? I hope so. That sounds funny. Like, is there, there's like buildings in this game. Where, like, if you destroy them, you just uh, straight up you can just walk up on top of them and stuff. But uh, I think Markov is misplaying heavily right now. 
this is going to be disastrous this straight because there's going to be a half track hit in the field in about like 40 50 seconds go on busy clear get back on the field to be honest we we could just cast from the big Larry's perspective because they're that bloody fast this really does take into account just how quickly they get onto the field look at how they run though like they're like tiptoeing What a shot on the move there. These guys are badasses. That's probably oh. my favorite unit in the entire game. Really? Except maybe the bike. Um, uh, well, I think only the bike actually, like, uh, is uh, slightly more my favorite. But they are fun. They are very Looking fun. Looking mobile. I love them. It's my idea of, like, asymmetry and power, full units and stuff. I like the ambient sprint. It's powerful. It's stupid. It's fun. That's what I want. I don't even consider it stupid, to be honest. I think it's... Because okay. they, like, look at what... You're paying elite infantry level costs for these guys. It better be, like, OP in some way, man. They're only 320 manpower on The only? That's not that much. It's... It's... Considering, like, they lose to rifles, who are 280. Yeah, that's 40 they lose more. Path, they lose to Pathfinders. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. The fact that when you take into account that they lose to a bunch of stuff, yeah, okay, it's fine then. They all and balance. For that, like, their, their most expensive infantry is, like, Gustatori. They're, like, even more overpriced. Mm, they're very expensive, yeah. I actually, as we say, me and Orange Pest are actually, weirdly, for a lot of you, we're fans of the DAC design. Well, it is, they do suit my playstyle, so... It's natural for me to defend them. And they do, but I think, they do uh, shoot my co one boner, so it's natural for me to like them. Meanwhile, M3, this is the go-to. Yeah, uh, so, so this is where Dak dies, <laughs> essentially. No, Berserkleri can put their heads in the tyres and stop it moving forward, surely. It's so, a bit... uh, little fun fact. Go on. Um, if you time your half check perfectly right, there's literally no answer to it. Which I think is not the case, because... Oh no, it is. Nice God, yeah. We've got 34 there's, there's seconds no until Panzer Buxus, so. And he's yeah, but he's him. already killed a Panzer Pioneer. Ouch. Well, that's that's game-ending levels of damage right there. Could be. Could be. Gets him out of there. These Panzer Buxus are going to need to hit the field very shortly. Medical truck stayed alive. Berzaglieri going north. And uh, he's still got a good amount of territory points. He's got his plus fives. He's only just having his plus ten taken away. Could be worse. Could be better. At this stage, just, just waiting on the eight red, essentially. Mm. You think that's what he's going to go? He's not going to go for the Panzerbuxer? Oh, he might, but personally, at this point, I wouldn't even bother, but... Now that is a weapon! Look at that! The muscles in that guy to carry that fucking thing. He's just carrying it from the hip. He's used to carrying such a weapon of such size. And he's also taking the ambulance into battle to defend the Berserkliari. But right now, he's carrying the entire weight of this game on his track. This guy fights. Place the word fight with something else. Uh, Path, uh, the paratroopers here have access to two upgrades. He does have the munitions, but he doesn't seem to want to go for it quite yet. Panzerbuchs is pushing. This could be the second Panzer Pioneer death if he's not too careful. Indeed, he is careful enough. M16 is out here. Doesn't know where he is right now. He's revealing himself. Interesting tactic. So, uh, I'll tell you why he's revealing himself. Basically, if you're inside the half track with the Panzerjägers, they have wonky, very wonky targeting. So if you throw enough infantry squad nearby, like those pirates that we're treating, there's a chance they just prioritize that instead of the half track. And that allows you to just burst down the uh, DAC half track, essentially. Capping in the south as we speak. Transport's loaded up and ready to make a pass. So the red tails. The African-American inclusion. Finally, in Company of Heroes, it's taken this long. The enemy have taken territory I wish they'd put an, uh, had an on-screen appearance, I really do, but uh, alas, not. Ah, uh, this won't end well for the Berserkers, I'm led to believe. 
Oh yeah, that'll totally win this fight. It's not very good cover either. Pathfinder's nerfed, by the way. They might not survive. Look at that, look at that efficiency. Four ah! models for one. Oh, yeah. they might die yet. He's 36. Could dissipate very quickly. See, I would actually keep them alive here, because you're just letting your opponent bleed me even more manpower. Ambulance forced away, so are the Biz Larry. Here comes the airborne with the bazookas. Oh, 250 light carrier hit hard there. Pathfinder's been sneaky, little buggers. Jibber's game to lose. What does he do from here, Markov? A-Rod. Okay. Double A-Rod is the only way, actually. But he hasn't even attacked. Um, so, for anyone who's playing back out there, no ever, I mean ever, build more than two bergs. Because this is what ends up happening. You get base pin. And you have no manpower because you upkeep the atrocious. You're just kind of crying all day, <laughs> trying to uh, survive. Yeah, it seems the way. They just, as you say, get manpower sinks so easily. Manpower... Yeah, and the way Markov is playing, it's too infantry heavy. It's not an infantry. It's not an infantry faction. It's a mechanized army. You just you go two squad, two uh, like two to three panzer PO, just call that a day. No more. At least we're learning Orange Pest. At least we're having an educational stream. If not, an epic run finals. The first game was good, though. We'll always have the first game. Yeah, the first game was good, but well, let's face it. It was uh, the balance that carried him. Mm, the balance. Ooh, he's getting some Berserkleri shots in on the M16. This thing has uh, only six rear armor. Could actually get the kill here if he's fortuitous. One less armor than a bike in the front, I think. Oh, he's focusing the wrong unit. Should be sprinting after that M16, in my opinion. He's created a bit of space, though. A little bit of breathing room. Let's check the American base. No signs of motor pool or tank depot quite yet. He went for uh, the infantry support center. And he has no upgrades at the moment. Right, still no sign of anything else. He has the armory, but that's all he has. Let's check his command group at least. Ah, Caro Amato, here we go. Here we go, Orange Best. He has a chance now, surely. Maybe. Orange Best isn't there. Okay. Oh, sorry, I also pushed the talk, I forgot. <laughs> there was, uh, there's two paratroopers on the field, right? Most likely, there's one already getting the bazooka as we speak. Yeah, so the the problem is the car is probably unupgraded, and Jibber is literally, I think, just about to take the tier four because I just saw something get built in the base. Yeah, he doesn't have the next teching structure yet, so yeah. He has oh no my upgrades. god, we are the this the desperation of all of the ten all desperations. He's yeah, twelve minutes in, he's just got his first caro and he has no upgrades. It's gonna so, be. Painful. So, in the base, what's getting built there for Chibber? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. He also has 89 fuel as well. Two Bazooka Airborne squads. This is. gonna have to inhale some serious copium to get out of this one. Big shout out to Jim the Rat King in chat, by the way. He's uh, donated to the Master League to help, uh, or help our coffers. Thank you, sir. Alright then, yeah, this looks over. This is, uh, well, he does have the option to outplay his opponents, of course. I mean, that is possible. He has two Caro Amatos, but as me and Orange Pest have mentioned a few times now, he does not have upgrades for them. So no tungsten rounds, no improved health ability, whatever that one's called. And, uh, yeah. Ow. Right, Berzaglieri in the north here, up against the captain and his retinue. 
Pathfinders. And a grenade. Has he moved? He has not. That's a lot of health damage. And the bazooka finishes one of them off as well. Owie. That's another... Basically all of <laughs> them. Probably Marco's manpower down the drain again. Yeah. We have the upper hand. It Keep should pushing. be. Meanwhile, Jib is now building the hell? Okay. So, that's the bad, bad call in this situation. Normally, you're better off going Hellcat. We have vehicles available in reserve. Yeah. But, know. um... Sherman would have been a better Germany would be better. Yeah, yeah he's already got a lot better. of AT. He's got the double paratrooper bazookas. I would have gone for Sherman, personally. It's just, uh, there's also a problem that the, the Karos can actually penetrate the Hellcat consistently. Compared to the normal Sherman, which has like 200 armor, it's just a lot harder for the Karos to actually do a lot of damage. Yeah, Musafa in chat wants to give us a prime gaming code for the skins. Yeah, we'll run a competition after that. How about that, Musafa? Um, yeah, we'll run a competition. One mine set up in a devious location. He's trying to tempt him in with the M16. Caros are good. You just need the upgrades on them, 16 Anos. Currently pushing up with the Panzer Pioneers. He's getting all these points. He's trying to make a game of this as Markov, but he's up against difficult odds here. And here comes the Hellcats, the Bazookas. The little M1340s have to evacuate, and they've gone the wrong way, in my opinion. They should have gone south to blow this bush. Pathfinding issues. He couldn't find his way around, and that's game, everybody. He made the wrong decision. Ow. He gets another one, but this is all over now. There's no way back. Wait, has he not surrendered yet? What's going on? <laughs> well, I, I walked. I actually walked away from the screen because I thought the game was like over. Yeah, no, it's still going. I'm not going to show him the disrespect of. Uh, it's over. It is over. We'll give us times two for a little while. GG. There we go. This game is based on spam. He <laughs> he. What did he say? That spam infantry. Well, actually, Markov, that's why you lost his Dak in Orange Pest's opinion. But yeah, I suppose it is. GG well played. GG well played. That's your best of five on Feynmanville. And the winner of $50. We've got Jibber Jabba Jabba. Well done, sir. Well played to... Um... And Jibber, by the way, observes the rules. He does not show up in chat whilst he's being casted. He just waits until it's over and then he says why he won't make the trash Sherman. Alright, I don't care to argue battles. I don't care <laughs> enough, so whatever. Uh, Orange Best, do you want to try and beat me only with Grandius, or do you want to head out now? Uh, I'm going to go back to watch an anime, I think. <laughs> no problem, okay. Yeah, this day, this youth is so corrupted. The <laughs> Eastern Hemisphere. The vile, vile tendrils. Dude, I'm, I'm heading over to the Eastern Hemisphere next month, actually. I'm looking forward to it. Oh, where? Taiwan. Oh, no, a guy who lives in Taiwan. He's also British. Really? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, I remember he talked about wanting to snipe you when you streamed 1v1. Be you. Nice. Yeah, that's why I don't like streaming 1v1 all the time. When I get my ranks up, it means everything. Well, he's he's like a scrub me. like you, I think. But oh, the more skill levels. Fair enough. I don't want no scrubs. Scrubs are the kind of guy make no love for me. He lives... I don't think he lives there. Doesn't Hopef he live in the US? Hopefully, Carrickson. Hopefully, my friend. But, you know, you gotta... You gotta be brave sometimes in life. I don't think they will. They've been threatening to since 1950, so... It's probably not gonna happen. The runner-up, Markov, is you. Well played, sir. You win twenty dollars. All right, Orange Pest. Thanks for your services today, mate. Really helpful. Everyone, go check out Orange Pest on um, Twitch. He's a great co-caster, good guy, and a good player. I'm like two of those things. <laughs> I already have a haircut, 
So. Mm. Cut my hair for once. Um, it's disgusting. <laughs> I was a lot of... <laughs> my long, flowy hair was back. Yeah. Oh, you've actually cut your hair. That's interesting. Yeah, I have. Show it. Prove it. You want to see? You want to see? All right. Oh, um, yeah. Like, it's yeah. not groomed, so it's hideous. Whatever. Right Here we go. Here we go. Orange past haircut reveal. Is that a haircut? Did you see what I had earlier? Yeah, but the sides, are they actually, like, shortish? Oh, uh, yeah, I suppose it is a cut, yeah. Uh, thank you, mother from us. She's done a good job, your mother. She's done a good job. Well, no, 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 that wasn't my mother. <laughs> I was just some rando. I was, uh, I was up visiting my grandparents, and they were, like, forcing me at some point to get a haircut. Oh, my God. You want to keep your small amount of inheritance, so, yeah, you got to get the haircut, I guess. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Because, yeah, that that's the reason I got it. Thank you. <laughs> oh, well then. Fair right. enough. I'm going I'm to go watch my anime now. Have a good one. <laughs> Cheers, Orange Fest. Thanks, mate. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Alrighty then. Does anybody want to challenge me to a fame and fill off? The ultimate battle. I don't want to play in Kiri's too good for me. I'm just gonna... Yeah. Inca's become like an absolute mercenary for money, I've noticed. Like he calculates whether he wants to play based on what money's available. Which is fair enough. But, uh... It's very mercenary on me. Let's just do some map editing. Let's figure out what we want to do next on this lovely map. Not map editing. Map advising. K-Pen does the hard work. We just do the theory. Um, I'm going to make a list of changes. I think we... Whoa, 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 whoa. Why is it a countdown? I should be in skirmish mode, I think. That is skirmish, apparently. Fair enough. Okay, start game. $5.20 is my final offer. Right then. I think, just me, there's a couple of changes we need for this map. Firstly, we need to take out this bush and put an actual bush kind of like here. And that's definitely what needs to happen next. Bush here. Get rid of this bush. The reason being is to make it more like this fuel. So this one can be harassed out of sight of the base. Uh... That's something we should do there. Next, I think it's Imber that you can get behind the heavy cover here against this player, but you can't do it here. So I think we should get rid of this bush. Like, probably, I don't know, move it somewhere else. Um, Yeah, we should probably do that. There's enough bushes around here. We just get rid of it. It's fine. Yeah, we could raise some elevation, Jibber. That's true. It is extraordinarily flat right now, but it does go higher up here, you'll notice. Maybe we could, I don't know, make it even more high, but then I think K-Pen will kill us. It's not too flat, it just is what it is. Oh, we could raise this section, I'm pretty sure. That would be pretty easy to raise, make that higher. Put this house on a hill. Ha! <laughs> Rower. Funny. But yeah, we could put that house on a hill, that's possible. We could raise the, the map here more so, I think, without hurting it too much. I definitely think that's possible. No, there's no more models we can find. k has been through the world editor a million times. Literally nothing exists. This is bits of the Monte Casino mission. Um, add uh, six independent campaign attributes uh, put over each other. We can't find anything. But... I know it looks ugly, but it's kind of quirky in how it plays. I don't hate it completely. You know, you can get in this side, and then you can only see here. It kind of, kind of balances garrisons out a little bit. 
for example, we can't find a water wheel for the water wheel location, which is just terrible. Um, really find that upsetting. So yeah, my big big change is I think next uh, bush there, take out this bush, take out this bush. Uh, maybe yeah, I'll add some elevation there, add some elevation here perhaps. Uh, any other ideas what needs to be changed? Maybe make this um, green cover, maybe like make it less accessible. Um, maybe crush it in the middle a little bit. Hmm. That's not a bad idea, Vulcan. We could just put wood here and show that it got destroyed. Vulcan, you're a genius, sir. Right then. So. Okay. South. Oh, where's my bloody ability to do that? Hang on. Get rid of that. South East Fuel. Reverse. Bushes. No bush left. Much bush right. Next. Water wheel. Show wooden splinters. To show how it got washed away. Okay. Um, South VP area. Remove bush on northwest side of this area. Because cause OP for north. Oh, well, UP for south, rather, because UP for south. There we go. The bikes can't go over the wooden... They can't go over this. Let's test that out. Well, I can go over there, but you mean over here, right? The small bridges is what you mean. Oh, okay. Well, I kind of liked it being an infantry only area. It's an infantry only area, Jibber. Maybe it would be cool if they could get over it, though, to be honest. Sure, we can capture that. Let's show the infantry how it's done. It would be cool if they could get over Driver. there. We'll the ask river. the question to Cape Should vehicles be able to get onto a e island? We think they should at least try. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Doug and me are funny. Any other changes we can see, guys? Any other changes? How about this garrison? Why does it have the bush on this side these days? Because, like, is it necessary? Because it's not that OP anymore. It's not that OP anymore at all, really. Um. Oh, I don't have it selected anymore. There we go. Teleport. In we go, boys. Player, game, fog of war on. See what I mean? It doesn't really do much. Uh, oh, yeah, the elevation in the corner is a good point there. Okay, so. We don't need the bushes on south side of central house anymore. Um... I'll check the MGs in a second, Jib. It's a good point. Okay, yeah. Add elevation to cottage on far west. House on a hill. Add elevation to vineyard in far east. Map looks a bit flat is a common complaint. Okay. Let's add some bloody 
hyphens to bullet point this out a bit. Good points, guys. Let's keep it up. What else? Oh, yeah, we need to check the G, uh, the MGs, don't we? Team weapons. MG My team. My crew are ready. Christoph, take board. the lead. This is the Assemble on me, boys. Standing. Get in, crew. Move in. Yeah, exactly, Rao. That's just... You know, if it's easily doable, I don't believe it should be. What's our target? We've got orders to advance. Um, check the window near door. Can MG shoot out? Ah, yeah, that's the one we wanted to check. Weapon crew here. Deploy MG. Get it loaded. No route too challenging. Seems they can. Capture and hold that area. Yes, they can. Why keep Bush? I mean... Hmm. Oh, okay, yeah, sure. Let's see. Yeah, I agree, I agree, I agree. Good point. Okay. Any other points we need on this map? Any other points we can think of? It's fucking gorgeous, isn't it? It really is nice. It really is looking good. Um, oh, yeah. Ba MG positioning's here. This base is, like, m bigger than South Base now, isn't it? Considerably. Um, that MG's too far forward, definitely. Um, yeah, let's correct that. North base, pull back, and repause Ishion. Forward most MGs. Yes, I did, Um, That's a good point. Jibber, anything else we can think of? You were making a point about munitions yesterday. What was your point there? Was it that you wanted these to be manpower points, and then maybe we find... Oh, these to be manpower points, and then maybe we find, like, better place for the munitions. We could actually make these munitions... Yeah, it does. Do you want to make these munitions instead, then? We could easily do that. Let me just check how that's going to work. No, because the plus 16 and the plus 10s, 5s are too close together, then. Yeah, it's, it's it's an easy shout, Jibber. I just want to check my flow, because I was very happy when I drew this in Microsoft Paint about a month ago. I was very happy with how it kind of looked, if that makes sense. Because, like, the fuels are in a band. The fuels are in a band. Munitions would be a bit like, ugh, a bit gross if I did that. Hmm. Oh no, because they wouldn't be there. So let's just think about this. This would be a manpower point. So it would go munitions, munitions, munitions. <gasps> Ooh, I quite like it. Munitions, munitions. Yep, easy. Nice. Good work, Jibs. That's what Orange Pest was suggesting as well, to be fair. Good work, Orange Pest. Okay. Change. MP bonus points with muni... Cut off points. Easy win. Smiley face. Yeah, but I don't know. It just make more sense if it was munitions. What does that mean? Jibber. Why are you doing that face? I hate that face so much. Don't do that face. The jibber what spin. I hate it so much. Oh, oh, sorry. I'm thinking of swapping the manpower with the munitions. Oh, I see, guys. Okay, right. Well, what do we like better? Do we like better? What do we like better? Swap MP with Muni. Swap Extreme MP with Muni cutoffs. Or change. Plus 10 to plus 5. Quick poll there. There's, there's enough people. Um, so, yeah, what do we like better? Do we want to swap the manpower points with munitions points so both cutoffs are manpower? Or do we want to change these to the plus 5 so they cap quicker? Simple. I think it'd be more elegant to have 
them be that. But I just want to, I want to think about the munitions. If it was plus fives, it would be five, five, ten, ten, thirty, plus the two sixteens. So it'd be sixty-two in total, which isn't much munitions. Or, alternatively, we could have plus fives here and here. Yeah, I think the most elegant solution is to swap the extreme MP with Muni. Um, because then you'd have the two cutoffs. It would just be more obviously a better idea. Definitely. It looks a bit glitchy right now. That would make it better. So, yeah, plus ten Muni's in the north. Happy days. Cool. Oh, we could have plus five fuels. Plus five fuels. That would be cool because then you'd have Muni, Muni, fuel, fuel. Ah. Okay, so the question is no longer... Oh, the people are still voting, actually. It's 5-3. It's quite close. Um, plus five fuels would be cool on the pier and the manpower and the, the AE island, wouldn't it? Plus five fuels. Ah, but then you'd have... Huh. No, I'd say, yeah, these ones change them to munis. This change it to fuel. Then you have to go really far to get the fuel. That's pretty epic, to be fair. But then, I don't know. I quite like having the plus fives here, to be honest. It's kind of nice. If you have fuel, muni, fuel, if you were going up there. Or you go fuel, muni, fuel. Or you go fuel, muni, muni. Fuel. Yeah, it has to be muni. It's definitely muni. Okay, so we're we'll swap the extreme with the man power points. You've said it here first. Let's do another poll. Poll. Uh, Pier Island. Plus 10 Muni. Plus 5 Fuel. Two minute poll. Let's go. I actually have my own preference for this, but I won't say it out loud. Yeah, I think that's the better option. Everyone's voting the way I thought they should. So. Train with me. Yeah, but... <laughs> That's interesting, um, Vulcan. Three peers. Hmm. I don't dislike Vulcan's idea. Having... Yeah! Shouldn't it be a U-shape? Wouldn't that make more sense? Because this is naturally green cover, I think. Is it? Let me get an infantry squad. Oh, God, go away. Problems, we have answers. Oh, dear. All right. We want this guy. We're all here, sir. Yeah, it's green cover, is it? Yeah, it's green cover. So, we should make it U-shape. You want it to be... Uh, I'm not going to go to a double U-shape. That's too much. But a U-shape might be better. So, let's do a new poll. What do people... Oh, there's already a poll active. It's 3-2... Fuel to Muni. Let that finish. Three all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to vote Muni. Screw you guys. Four, three. Uh, the boat. Oh, it could be the boat. Yeah, it's the boat, probably. Yeah, it seems to be the boat, actually, now you come to say it. You can tell. Yeah, it's the boat. Good points. Good points. Hmm. I quite like it how it... Well, it looks like this usually. It'll look like this for you. I just have reshade, so you might prefer it when it looks like it does in vanilla. I just add a layer to it. It helps my visibility. I quite like it. You want to see what the bridge looks like? It's funny. You ready, guys? Bridge time! You ready? Whee!
set this thing up. You can do it. Let's just put loads of people on the bridge now. Uh, Zach, it's an optional thing. Oh, I don't have Duck. <laughs> uh, I thought I did. Who who am I in this game? I'll just be Americans, I guess. Vehicles. Sherman's Chaffee. Everybody drop! Ooh, let's go full Co3. Let's do some... Um... Give us something to do! Let's do some... Strafes on it as well. Huh. That should give me everything I want, right? Why isn't it working? Either way. Um Air Force is beginning reconnaissance. I want all the command points, you bar steward. Do I have to select myself? Oh, that's what I have to do. Okay. There we Commander, go. we should spend our munitions. Better. Now we're talking. Should I go carpet bombing run? I think we should. Acknowledged. Carpet bombing runs are finally available to us. Full co three. Escort, you're clear to peel off. Give them hell. Oh, here we go, guys. Here we go. Oh, yes. Ah! You're not coming back up now, are you? Wonderful. Wonderful. <laughs> Insane play. Meanwhile, let's try and take out this goat if we can. We surely should hit the goat. Let's try and take out the goat, actually. That's probably a good idea. ETA right fucking now. Ooh, hoo, hoo. Oh, we nearly hit it! You are a lucky goat. You're so lucky right now. Okay, well, let's try with a health cattle, too. Look alive, boy. Grab up that Stand engine, inside. boys. We're moving. Let him through. Just living out my uh, wildest dreams. I'm a vegetarian, buddy. Oh, he's lucky again. Now that's not true. The goat isn't disabled. It's just, it's just on a raft. It's not disabled. Okay, fair enough. Indeed. Delete. Any other ideas on how we could possibly attack the goat? It's important work we're doing. That's it. I can't be eating them. They're too disgusting. Any directional abilities? Whizbang? It's not a bad one. We'll try a whizbang afterwards. That's not going to help. Uh, delete. Um, we're definitely going to try a whizbang now. Wizzy Bangy. That's it. Let's get this baby purring. Oh, oh, this this has a more of a shout. There has to be a way. Okay, maybe we can overshoot. Come back. We'll try and overshoot in the goat's general direction. Let's get the minimum range sorted. Oh, tell you. There we go. Maybe one of these will hit. Maybe it'll go over. No, they're alarmingly accurate. Shame we don't have the P-47s, to be honest. I think our best chance is a carpet bombing. Let's just get rid of the Nazi Mega Mansion. Die, Nazi scum! Okay. Standard procedure. Hit the fuckers. This should do the job. That's how the Americans did it in the real war. 
The Nazis are holed up in an ancient... <laughs> an ancient uh, gothic structure. Call in the Air Force. Right, okay. Can you walk now on it now? Let's go. No lagging behind. Oh, you can. There you go. Get ready to jump off. Let's head out, boys. Stay together. Amazing. Indescribable. So... Oh, I didn't actually do more than one of those at that point, actually. I should have done. I thought I had instant ability recharge on. Apparently not. <gasps> Reset battle group. Yes, this is what I wanted. So now... Air Force is beginning reconnaissance. I think we've got a chance of hitting the goat. Go on, you beautiful P-47s. You can do this. Oh! 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 This thing's invincible. They fire very short, yeah, unfortunately. Oh well, we tried, guys. We tried. We can't say we didn't try. Ah, yes, that code. Let's speak to the guy about the code. Um, and now we've done our fame and vill improvements list. Any last fame and vill improvements other than goat kill ability? We've got quite a few here, to be fair. Um, I think that should do us, to be honest. That should do the job. Alright. Nothing else to add, dudes. Alright. Thanks for watching. Let's go and raid somebody. It's been emotional. It's been incredibly emotional. Let's go and raid people. Anybody want to stream? Are you going to stream, Vulcan? Who wants a reasonable size raid? Hmm. Aussie Drongo. I don't know what that is. Right, let's see who's on Twitch, because nobody on Koto.org, nobody uses it. No problem, Doug, really. See you later, mate. Ah, here we go. 101st Airborne. Wonderful man. From Korea. Here we go. Thanks for watching, dudes. Catch you later. <laughs> exactly, Vulcan. Their non-existent replay functionality. My favourite. Adios, amigos.